Hi everyone, hope you're having a fantastic day. I've got a little bit of a different video for you. Now I haven't been covering a lot of contenders during the actual regular season, but contenders playoffs is upon us. So we're gonna be diving right back into the analytical coverage of the tier two scene, as well as following along towards the playoffs. Cause well, I care, Envy's in the playoffs and Envy's gonna win it all. Anyway, so in the meantime, I'd like to spread awareness to another great content creator. And well, he's actually a pro player, but he's probably one of the most brilliant people in all of Overwatch. You know him as Elk. He is the main support for the Philadelphia Fusion. I had him as a guest on my stream many, many months ago, and it was a much smaller stream. However, this man is, he's not just the gold standard, he is the platinum standard for Overwatch knowledge, and he does it in real time when he shot calls as a support. So, so after a match between Fusion University and Atlanta Academy, Elk on his Twitch stream reviewed the match. And it may not be my analysis, but I think it's really cool, really in-depth, and it comes from the perspective of a pro player who actually played in the match, which is a super rare opportunity. So I hope you enjoy, and definitely check out Elk on Twitch and Twitter if you are interested in more. Have a great day. I'll have more content for you tomorrow, as well as on Saturday, there is going to be the North American Finals for the Get Good Tournament Series. So look forward to that. It's going to be a fun day of Overwatch, and I hope to see you in chat. Okay, enjoy. See you tomorrow. Yeah, there is nice. So, on the Zarya that's gonna be Bernard's hero this do people time understand the difference between these comps? Ice queen. The May. So, I wanna. Give me a fucking overhead, spectators. Okay. Do people understand the difference between these comps? The gorilla this time around. So, there. Okay. This is a good overhead. Um, I don't, Ajax plays with an eye tracker. I don't, I don't know what that means. I'll be honest. I'm confused. So I'm not going to respond to your question. Um, okay. So there's a lot of things here. So I'm going to try to break them down. I'm going to start with our comp, what we are looking to do. The strengths of our comp and the weaknesses of our comp. Before I talk about any of the matchups. So, primarily with our comp, obviously we're playing Goats, but we have May over Diva. Some call it Snotes. It doesn't fucking matter. It's just Goats with May over Diva. You don't need to give it all these fancy nicknames. The strengths of the comp are in a straight up 6v6, you're generally really favored. Not only do you have wall to split objectives, but to be honest, in a 6v6 with a shitload of tanks, May kind of just does more than D.Va does without ult. Even with ult, May kind of objectively does more. The downsides are, on a lot of maps, you're way weaker to Pharah. There's not good uh, opportunities to use the wall. There's not good opportunities to use the ult. This is one of the Koth maps that we as a team decided May was better. Um, so it's important because we, well, a lot of the calls we make here, as soon as we go, I don't want to say negative in a fight. I want to say we go to disadvantage, meaning we are down cooldowns or, and we're worried about being engaged on is we make the call to drop back point, And I'll point out when we do that, because on the objective, it's really, really hard for them to pressure our Reinhardt because we can always wall and kill their Rhine. So they have to be like very tactical in the method that they push us. So we're also very weak to the grab combos because we have no diva, so they can just like grab for free, which is a bit awkward. And our Rhine Shield will take a bit more damage if we do have a long sustained fight on point, assuming they have diva. So they're playing Winston. Um, I think this comp is trash. Yeah, I think it's trash. So. Why do I think it's bad? So the first time Fusion Unity played against it, we got destroyed. We got absolutely rolled by it. Second time we played it, we got pretty rolled by it. I went into a custom game, tried to think about maps and figure out why it was beating us. So the main thing we figured out is, one, the Winston Bubble does a really good job protecting their Reinhardt when they go aggressive and they jump you. 
Two, if you choose to focus their Winston, the Zarya bubble on him provides so much like tank pressure with the Zarya bubble on him, the monkey bubble, and him landing that you can almost never kill him faster than they kill your Rhine and then you lose the fight. So you end up in like this really weird situation where they are trying to be way more aggressive than you and if you ever let them jump and split your team, you're probably going to lose the fight. There are a lot of ways you can counteract this. One of the issues we had is Chansik was trying to swing on their Reinhardt when he got pushed. So Monkey jumps behind him. They start swinging on Chansik. If he swings back, he's going to die. So after we like looked at this comp and kind of broke it down, we wait for them to jump. We try to speed back and peel. As soon as we've disengaged, we are immediately favored because they're playing Monkey. And Monkey is going to do nothing without jump or bubble. And they've used Zarya bubble. So it's a lot about the tempo of the fight and not getting split by them. We fuck up in this first fight and we get split by this pillar, but you know, it happens. We we ideally shouldn't have been, and I do think our comp is favored, but we, d we do fuck up and you can see like what their comp is trying to have us do. You can like see the fuck up that they go for and actually pull off successfully. Yeah, you just, you just want to kite and re-engage post monkey cooldowns. And like they should never be able to kill you if you play it smart, so you do win the long fight. Is going to be no chance of eating a blizzard. Atlanta have a lot of mobility, a lot more shielding this time. So, important note in this mid fight, we didn't know what comp they're on. Their monkey's hiding behind the wall and didn't show. So, that's important because if we get too aggressive, they can really easily kill our Rhine. So, I'm trying to find out if they have Diva, May, or Monkey here. And you can see I end up going up here to scout it as he's crouching behind this wall. This position is already really bad versus the monkey because of how easy it is to split us i see the monkey i call for us to back up this is a little greedy monkey jumps we get split so chancic swinging he should be backing up he's overextending here this is kind of what i mean this is a mistake that he's making that he should not be making but that's okay um I will show it to him later. So because he's swinging here, not only is he taking damage from the Zarya and the Lucio and possibly the Zen spam, but he's also not backing up and he's just going to die because we're all expecting to kite here. That sucks. It's unlucky. He gets killed. Also unlucky. No one can stop that once he starts swinging. So believe it or not, magically, this fight is not lost. We just have to pick someone and try to focus them as we are disengaging. Um, I'm pretty sure Alarm Discord's Dogman and Nice hits a headshot. So Alarm body shots Dogman, I spray him a bit, Nice hits a headshot, he dies. Now we're even. We're not favored because Reinhardt is really important, but we're even. We can't go point, but we're probably not going to die. First to fall in this fight, the Nice gonna even things up. Dogman gonna be the first for Atlanta. So we're trying to kite back and save Nice. He's in a pretty risky position. I don't know if we have bubble, but I think we can save Nice regardless. Um, if they if they push him and he does get back, the wall here threatens to like wipe them. So they they should be playing slow and rotating point right now. Academy. So this is a five v five as the control point. They try to kill Nice with a pin. It does open up, but it and they use bubble for it. So not only are they committing to staying top and trying to take the 6v6 or the 5v5, they also are bubbling their Rhine pretty aggressively. So as soon as that happens, we all start screaming Rhine because we know he's out of position and we can focus him while they are focusing Nice who got booped back. We get Rhine really low. We don't finish him. We don't actually make the call to back up. We just all realize we need to back up here, which is smart. So we all kite back together. And then I'm calling to play slow because our Rhine is almost back from the first fight. And as soon as our Rhine comes back, we 100% win this fight. Gator splits here, but like, I don't know if this is his fault or his team's fault, but this is awful on somebody's part. Um, our Rhine comes back. I have amp speed. Ajax just amp healed, I guess. What did Ajax amp? Nice going back to spawn. This is Atlanta. He just... What? Okay, so he amp sped nothing. Okay. I would at least amp heal your Rhine. Amp speeding in the air seems truly atrocious. Is how I feel about... Like, like this amp, this amp usage is... It's really bad, dude. Like, not only did he just run away from the Reinhardt, he's not in position. He, he booped too. Like, I feel like they thought they won this fight.
Maybe. Like, I think he's in the mindset of they already won the fight and they're just trying to clean up the fight. That that would make sense to me. But it's still it's still a bad lapse in judgment. And then Gator is still over here, like, alone when his team probably called to go point and he just didn't. And because Dogman died and Ajax was, like, over here, he doesn't really have any healing. <clears throat> so, like, we just re-engage on him with speed and kill him. And then Ajax tries to save him late and doesn't have amps, so we kill Ajax. He also fucks up the wall ride, but that's... Meh. So we're down Neist. We just picked their Ryan and their Lucio, and we're fighting point. We're 100% favor just to cap and clean it up. Um. Hmm. They should have won that fight. The early trade did favor them. They did a good job pushing their advantage and also killing our May. Their Reinhardt overextended and their Lucio were out of position. Those were the two issues. Instead of overextending to kill the May, they could have capped point for free and had a favorable situation for a fight on point with our retake. That's how I that's how I feel. Yeah, don't don't bash Ajax. That's shitty. No reason to do that. Everybody a, should be looking to improve. B, he's better than literally all of you in chat, probably. So, there's not really a reason to hate on him. <clears throat> First, how much longer can they hold it? The whole strength of Fusion University now bearing down on this point. Oh, and the Winston was shield dash before getting back onto the point, so there is no stall from them, so only 5%. We did a good job zoning the monkey to recap point, now we're calling to push them. Um... This is still super messy in our comms because we don't know what the ult situation is. Like, like we're sitting here and I'm like, I think they have Rally and Trance. I should have realized Zen died, so they don't have Trance at all. I didn't realize they're so close to Grav. So, like, this is all... This is all clusterfucky. Oh, Fozix is in chat? Okay, well, majority. Let's say the majority of chat. So we call a push, but we don't really know what they have up. But we do know we're still up numbers, so we're comfortable pushing. Um, they rally, and that kind of off puts us, and we don't want to use trance to counter the rally. We wall. Um, this is a, a situation where I call to go point. Right, they're rallying. They're favored in this fight. We don't have grav yet. Just trance is not enough to win this fight. If we go point, we get to reset our cooldowns and take another mid fight that we can try to win. The wall is good at stopping their aggression, but it doesn't really do anything other than that. Rally right away, so everyone has that damage. Which group is? I think Fozix is a, is a good Lucio. What do you mean? What group is he in? I'm not like trying to throw shade at them. <laughs> I mean, like I don't play with other Lucios for obvious reasons because I'm a main support, but I I respect both him and Ajax as as like players. So we called a reset point. Um, don't hurt me. <laughs> I'm lucky. So whenever these walls are up on point and you're playing May, you actually have full walls, which is pretty cool. I don't know if a lot of teams know this, but it's one of the reasons May is the strongest is because when these walls are up, you get full wall locations, which is like super strong. Um, yeah. Academy are coming on to the objective. Alarm kills Dogman because Alarm is amazing. Nothing else needs to be said about that. And we win the fight because we're up one. As soon as we get that pick... So there's a couple important things. If we pick the monkey, I probably wouldn't call for a dry fight. But because they don't have Zenyatta and they don't have a Diva Bomb to combo with the grab that I think is coming up, there's a very, very low chance that they can win this fight. They don't have enough damage. They have nothing to combo with the grab, so we can trance the grab easily. And we're already up one. So like... Given the situation, we don't need to commit ults. If the situation was like they have a diva bomb and a grav, then we maybe need to commit ults to make sure they cannot execute their combo, or them, or we just try to save Zarya bubbles and stuff like that. <clears throat> Some fights we win because alarm is alarm. Um, alarm is amazing. Like, no one can deny that alarm is an amazing flex support player. <laughs> Um, so we're just kind of calling to push and focus here. It's pretty, it's pretty clusterfucky. It's a great term, by the way. Um, really good job by Snillo to counterpin their Ryan towards the edge. Like, that's a heads-up play. Not letting him charge is really important. The fact that Snillo, in the chaotic fight, found the most important target and went after him was important. Oh. 
gonna be knocked down. This means that they're- Bernard getting booped here is terrible, but oversight, he shouldn't have been this close to the edge given we were already winning. There are gonna be some environmental kills from- Is Alarm like Zen or Ana better? Alarm likes Zen the most. He's also insane at Ana though. Ajax and Atlanta Academy, but that's not going to be enough. As Fusion University are gonna end up getting- um, so we're just we're just cleaning up game this fight. Win there at the edge of it's really good that we didn't commit any ults. We have six ults. Important. Yeah, fuck it. I'll talk about it. One sec. Okay. The May comp, when holding the objective, they can only come from one of three chokes. One of the chokes is bottom. You can win a 5v6 with the May wall or at least buy enough time to get back point. So I will never use this position again after saying this because I'm saying it. So I want you all to know I'm taking that personal sacrifice for you guys. Um, you play your Lucio under on the bridge in the corner. This means if they choose to try to retake from under, you get free boop kills, a free fight win. And you get to reset. For free. Insane play i have done it in a ton of scrims leading up to this match it is an insane spot to play that gives you an absurd amount of pressure when they're retaking so they either have to retake from top right or they have to retake from top left if your lucio is playing under you get an audio cue when they're retaking from top left so what you do is when your team is top right if they're not coming from top right your team rotates to the left door that means you either wall them left or you wall them right and if they come under they lose so there is no good option to retake as soon as the May gets in position. Mind you, this is only a good strat if you have May, because it means the worst case situation is they fuck up on high ground, they wall, they drop back point, I come back and regroup with them, right? So if we're not playing May and I'm playing under alone, they can just get spent on and die, which sucks. So, but because we have the May, I can take this aggressive positioning to possibly win the fight for free. And you'll notice here, I actually force Hawks primal with my position. That is such a dangerous place to live as a Reinhardt right on the edge of the hangar there. But Fusion University managed to hang on to their lead here. ATL coming in. So you'll notice here I'm 1v1ing Hawk under. Missed that if you look at his HP. Very early on, it could have been a crucial misplay, but Not doing a lot to him, making sure he can't zap me, but I'm just poking him away. See, and then I get him low, and then he has to primal or I'm going to kill him. So not only did me playing under deny the monkey a free flank and a free way to pressure point, I also forced his ultimate for free. That's so much value. And what's even better is like, it doesn't matter how good the monkey is. He doesn't have an option there. If he uses his jump, I kill him. So like, the, the, that's why the May comp is so strong here is, is the positions you get to set up in defaults for retakes. It's even funnier when people play Hammond because if you boop them off that bridge and they try to grapple, a lot of people don't know this, you cannot get back on high ground easily. So a lot of times you just kill the Hammond with a boop, but he tries to stay alive. Like it happened, we scrimmed XL2 and they played Hammond and me and Logic sat down there for 35 seconds as he tried to get back up. Uh, yeah, the Winston flanking, especially when he has ult to pressure point is very common. Unlucky Hawk. If it makes you feel any better, um, your best play was probably going top left rather than bottom. But I think it's really close. If you've never played against a Lucio who's going to camp bottom like that, I don't think it's unreasonable to go bottom. Phase of the game, my friend. Uh, but either way, we forced Primal. I called it back up point again. They grab. University has six Atlanta Academy. We trance and they shatter. So I'm trying to pause it so we can go through every ult that gets used. So they started off with primal and then they grab and we wall most of the damage from the grab from the Zen. They shatter. It's a good shatter. It hits Snillo and Bernard. That's important. We don't have bubbles and we can't rally now. Alarm is still trancing though. That's important. Alarm pops off and eats the charge from Gator. That's huge. How did the Ajax only beat three people? Okay, he beat it behind a May wall. How far behind him? How long did he have behind the May wall? Okay, I don't blame Ajax for this. He's doing something super common. He just fucked up the execution. Idea behind this, totally reasonable. 
When you press Q on Lucio, you gain a little bit of height. So his plan is to wall ride up the wall, beat to get over the wall, land on top of the wall, and get the beat off. That's fine. That That's a fine plan. It's a good execution. Yeah, Hawk, it's really important your Lucio plays under because you can't let them retake point that easily. Otherwise, the May comp's bad if you let them go point that much. Um, so yeah, like Ajax fucked up the execution a little. I'm just trying to show that like this is a smart play from him. It's not a dumb play. This is the correct play for him to do. He just messed it up a little bit. Granted, it turns it turns out pretty fucking bad, but it only messed up a little bit. Uh, Alarm does a huge job blocking this pin. Then we grab and we shatter and we may ult. That's a lot of ults. Until he wakes up, Graviton. Surge coming from Fusion University. Chunks is going to get the first two kills. The Blizzard is. It's not terrible, but we probably didn't need the shatter. Like, grab may ult wins a fight anyway. We can shatter if they trance. So the shatter was wasted, but it's a chaotic fight where fucking four. Nine ults got used, really eight ults got used, so I don't really blame Chansik for the shatter. It does have a cast time that allows you to get, like, even after you land and you give yourself beat, you have, like, a second wiggle room to get LOS onto everybody. Didn't he shatter before we graft? Oh, my bad. Yep, you're right. This is a very important shatter that I missed. He shatters the ulting monkey and the Zarya. So I still don't know if that's important because we have grab May ult. The other argument here is everybody could go back point. Um, the shatter lets us stay high ground because he shattered the primaling monkey and we get to fight high ground. But it's not clear to me that the shatter was needed. But that's in a hindsight perspective. Given the context, I don't think you can blame Chansek for this shatter. This seems like a totally fine shatter. They'll have taken very, very low, but the heels are there. Transcendence is going to keep him alive until he wakes up. Graviton Surge coming from Fusion University. Chunks is going to get the first two kills. The Blizzard is... At we do a good job cleaning up, so but like once you grab Mail and they don't have D.Va, they have no so way to live. Far, Ham. Fusion University pretty dominant. So we still have Rally and Beat. They have Trance and they have their Rally coming up. And we're still holding defensively. Trance at Counterpin there. Yeah, to stop the Zen from dying from the pin. Was a smart play. Uh, they did swap off Winston here, which is reasonable. I mean, staying for the ult makes sense. The ult is like one of the strongest things about the Winston because you can solo separate the Rhine. Fine, we're gonna combo grab with a Blizzard. So often we see that Blizzard wasted. Um, I'm playing bottom here. As soon as I see they have Diva, I know no one's flanking, and I come back top to rejoin the team. You should only really like you can play under against both, but it was pretty clear to me that when Hawk swapped, he knew he's like I'm gonna be under, and he shouldn't go under. There's no way to uh, to keep the enemy team from using their mobility, but the Graviton Surge is a perfect answer. And so, University will still have that rally and the sound we call their faking, but like for some reason, we're just terrible at dealing with faking on this specific point because it, it's just it's just hard for us. There's a language barrier and a lot, but it's just hard for us. So, he's primal shutter and grabbing the exam second. Uh, not really. A shattered and grabbed, which was fine. You can get a pin kill pretty easily. They primaled because I forced it bottom. They weren't none of the ults were really related. Like it wasn't great ult usage, but it's not bad ult usage. Um, either way, the retake here, we wall the diva. We can't really kill the diva, but we chase the diva a bit. So we try for a second, and then we call the fallback point because we realize we've used our cooldowns to chase the diva and fail to kill the diva. On that diva, choosing that that's going to be a little bit better. They knew they heard you. They knew exactly why they lost that last fight. Is Atlanta Academy very far away? Um, so they use bubble here. We are rallying. They still we still beat. They still have trance. We know they still have trance. As soon as we force trance, this is amazing. This is something we've improved on so much recently. We've gotten really good. As soon as the enemy team uses a support ult, we know to back up. It's not even a call that has to happen. It's like, okay, we made them use their trance. We know we can back up and win this fight. So we all just back up. We play passive. We have the May. We know we can do that. They get zero value out of their transcendence. Okay, I'm going to mute you, my guy, because you're being kind of annoying. So I apologize. But uh, get wrecked. 
What forced the trance there? Our aggression on the Rhine, and they'd already used bubble. Atlanta Academy. Our bash on the Rhine. From a lot of their ultimate sugar free really wants that rally very soon as the heals are getting. So we bash Rhine there. He's super low. They have to trance since they don't have bubble or else he dies. Why is he banned? He's not banned. I just timed him out for 600 seconds because he was arguing with someone and I didn't like it. So I don't care, you know? Uh, the bubble was pretty early. Really wants that rally. Why they lost that last fight is Atlanta Academy very far I don't know. I think if he doesn't bubble there, we can probably kill him. I think they just dropped poorly. Like, they have eight more seconds before they even have to touch point. I don't think they need to just, like, run point right now. Like, just keep playing high ground and spamming us. You have a D.Va, we don't. You have way more shield pressure. I definitely think he could have bubbled more reactively, but I also just think their positioning there is bad. They can wait way longer. So as soon as they trance, obviously we back up. The trance was forced. I, th I do agree that it was forced for some pretty bad reasons. Snillo bashed to force trance, but they did bubble before he bashed. Um, and then we bash again because we know they don't have bubble. And we almost kill the Rhine. And we get a shatter. And we still have B. Um, just saying, Gator got a three-man charge kill here, and I almost screamed. He killed our May, our Zarya. Oh, he didn't kill our May. Hawk killed our May. But still, he killed two people with charges. That's insane. Like, fuck you. That's not fair. I beat afterwards because I realized, holy shit, we're losing this fight because Gator popped off. Um, me and Alarm called Dogman, push Dogman, Ajax and Hawk are doing their own thing. So, like, look at our focus compared to their focus. We're on Brig. We were on Ryan. Ryan charged off the map. Now we're on Zarya. Zarya dies. Now we're on Zen. Zen dies. Now we're on, I think, D.Va. Now we're on Lucio because Diva bombed. Well, I'm on Lucio because Diva bombed. Now we're back on Diva. Now, like our support ults, one just got so much more value, but also like our target focus in that last fight was just superior. Hawk, Hawk did well to remake there. Yeah, we should have been able to kill him. He did. The the bomb placement. And where he landed made it really awkward to try to pressure him. Never been seen footage of Alarm missing a single shot. Yeah, it's true. Um, but yeah, Gator's pin kind of tilted me. A little. We did win, but I was like, dude, holy fuck. That play was insane. They need to maintain presence on this point. And they did not. As Fusion University are going to take this 100 to 5. Wow. So this fight is kind of where the whole thing turned because our ult usage was just better and our comp was better and our setup was better. So tilted map one of the series. Tilted means I am annoyed with something that happened that was out of my control. That's what tilted means to me. Doesn't mean I'm like going to play worse. So just means that yeah you, know? you gotta find the weakness and take it you can create it like you said based on your so play you they're playing dive goats everybody understands dive goats um yeah everybody should understand dive goats you're like goats but you got a winston and you want to go fast and you want to pressure you can pressure their tanks or their back line um it really depends on their comp versus our comp they kind of just lose but they want to try to kill our zen so ideally they kill our zen but we have really good comms for Alarm to keep kiting. Like, I call wherever they're pushing, and then Alarm has giant brain and finds a way to run away from them. So we kind of just win this comp matchup. They have to swap to be favored. We're not playing GOATS. I know that's magical, but it turns out some other comps are actually pretty good when you have an absurd amount of high ground like this map has. Like, this map actually has too much high ground. Like, this high ground is just not fair for, for a Widowmaker to play. Offer, and I'm liking this look a little bit more. Hawk <clears throat> is such a great diva, but looking at Fusion University, we're going to start Snow off with a headshot and 25% on those wall hacks. In so, look at where Alarm is. Look at how nice this is. See? Dude, like, look at this big brain play. He knows he's going to get Dove. Look at how far back he's playing. Because Alarm knows if he fucks up and I have to go heal him, Nice will die, Snillo will die, I might die, so I cannot be put in a position to peel and heal him. 
So he, very attentive play, make sure not to get dove. It's a blind dive, but you have to blind dive. Like, this is a good play by Gator. I mean, he's betting on Alarm to fuck up. Alarm didn't fuck up. That's unlucky, but it's still a reasonable play. I guarantee it. I guarantee every other contender's team is going to die to this jump. The jump's not going to be high enough. But maybe I guarantee most owl away. teams are. The are not going to lie. Pretty close to below half. He does get pretty pressured, to be He's fair. Very but weird position right now in the, the Venom mines like he gets out and doesn't even die. Dogman dies to Nice just killing him. Snell a little bit more old. Is Nice is going to get the first kill on And like as soon as they don't go point, if you go point, you have the chance to stabilize a fight and try to speed and kill a tank or a zen. But if you play out here in main, like we just pick you apart because our comp is so good at using high ground. Two dogmen, so Fusion University has a 6v5, and that's why you're seeing the tanks jump right in to the fight because they have an advantage. They have a numbers advantage. Chunk sick gonna get a kill onto Sugar Free. This is now a 6v3, pretty much three and a half. Of I call not to kill Diva. Yeah. If we didn't kill Diva, she'd get staggered, but someone wanted to kill Diva, so like look at this. Perfect boop. We cap the objective, then we kill Diva. Super unlucky. Why not dive Widow first though? Because Widow can grapple and then your monkey is too out of position. The, the the Widow can reposition, the Zen can't. You're never gonna kill the Widow and that's a problem. You need to kill with your first jump or you get picked apart too quickly. I think this comp is strictly better than Goats here because of all the high ground. Um, Yes. I think this comp is 100% better than Goats in the initial fight. I think it's awful at trying to defend against some things. But, edge, but not, it's really good know, at winning the first fight no, versus goats. Would like to add to that headshot kill count. Thank you. Uh, but Fusion University, this they make a, a good modified... swap. This comp is pretty good into our comp. Uh, look from what we see usually here on a downtown, um, really Snillo kind of needs to do nice a lot of work because Nice is going to be pressured out a bit. Unless they already have it here, and this is actually really crucial. If Snillo pops this infrasight, they could just force ATL to. So like that's bad. He can't take that damage. He needs to be able to stay on that high ground and play aggressive. Um, taking that damage kind of takes away any pressure we have for him to kill people. So that right click is actually huge from Dogman. Even though it didn't kill him, it still removes our Widow from the fight for a bit. Have to wait it out by even more time. Uh, but they're going to be living in Winston's bubble for now. A lot of people Nice ends up getting pressured back because of it. We lose Bernard because of it. So like a lot of things go poorly because we got forced back. Force Widow back then, right? But the thing is, you forcing back doesn't win you the fight because the Mercy Pharah are going to kill you. Like, as you saw there, Gator didn't die. The Widow didn't even have an impact in the fight. All that killed them was the Mercy plus Pharah shooting their supports. So, it's... In a traditional dive comp, it is good to force the Widow's cooldowns before starting a fight. When you want to push up and pressure the Widow. It's reasonable. However, that's not what this matchup is about. The Widow in this matchup is almost entirely meaningless. The Widow could almost even be a Sombra and it would function identically. The important thing is the pressure the Pharah is putting on your supports given the amount of high ground and airspace she is given in relation to where the cover is for the supports on the map. And that's like a, that's like a big... That's a big thing to digest, but it's it's an important it's an important aspect of this is that the widow is in no way the focal point of our comp. The widow is like the the sixth hero thrown in for me, right? I need somebody else to play high ground. If I get dove while nice is in the air, I don't want to be shifting forward into them. I want to be shifting back to the widow. So that's like the main difference between the widow and the somber here. We can create like a triangle of pressure where I can usually always get away while we have good pressure, whereas with the Sombra, we want to be more aggressive, and on this point, you don't really need it. Concise thought. Um, Widow shouldn't really need to be that far back. Assuming you lose this fight, couldn't you just swap Brian Goats and roll them for a retake? Yes. Or Winston Goats. Either comp destroys them. I have an opening for this point, but so far, that's going to be taken away. Saucy has switched to that McCree to counter that Farah in the air. It's that terrible we gave them point here. Um, I'm upset about it. This is a throw. We should be committing on point with Trance and Valk. Half my bad, half we didn't realize we'd lost Bernard and couldn't contest. Then we Trance this bomb and we Valk. The, like, everything goes fucking wrong for us this fight. We waste two support ults. We don't contest point. We start fighting once they've already recap point. They get to retake with one ult. Awful fight from us. 2K on 
that self -destruct. There's something Started off with a single individual mistake, snowballed a bit, couple more team mistakes. Ends up pretty fucking terribly for us, not gonna lie. Like, imagine, they recap right now, we're at 60%. Amazing! But, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's mostly that they need to end the fight quickly because they're so unfavored with their comp. So pressuring out the Widow isn't good enough. They need to get a kill. I want to play Burz XL2 in the finals again, but I have not looked at any of the teams in the other bracket about, like, who we're playing. Academy in control right now against Fuji University. Who cares about downtown. Ultimate and Goat's meta? Um, everyone should because ults are one of the most important parts of Goat's meta. Is this going... We stay monkey here instead of going Rhine. Normally we'd go Rhine, but we had primal, so it kind of makes sense to stay on monkey, right? <clears throat> going to be a reverse of their very first round. Um, Fusion University now. Ideally, with the monkey ult, we can force a support ult. We're super unfavored this fight. We're not really planning to win this oh, fight. We just want to take it fast and try to force ults. Somehow we win this fight, by the way, and I don't remember how. Like looking at it right now, it's insane that we could even try. Like. We're fresh on four of our ults, and we only have two tank ults, and they have pretty much four ults, including both support ults. Who cares about ults and goats meta? Yeah, man, ults don't mean anything. Who would need, like, insta-kill abilities? Eventually, and you're going to be, you know, forcing yourself landing on our bullets. However, a mispositioning gave ATL that opening. Um, I don't know about this positioning. I don't hate it, but why can't Hawk and Gator be way more up? Really like, why are they in a fucking ball here? Like, you're not playing goats. You're playing a McCree comp. You need to make space for your McCree. If you're all in, like, a tiny cube, you're not making space for your McCree. You're, like, inviting us to dive you and zone him. So, so this is a fuck up. They should be like, Monkey should be here. Diva could be top scouting. Diva can then rotate if they see us coming right side. I call to go right side because it's the fastest way we can get in dive range without taking poke. Also gives Alarm really good LOS and survivability. If you win the initial fight, would you counter swap goats immediately if... Or not if they go goats? If you win the initial fight, would I counter swap goats immediately or not? If they go goats. What does that mean? I'm going to ask you because that sentence confuses me. If they are playing goats, we want to play the Pharah comp because the Pharah comp is very, very strong into goats. Arguably 95% win rate almost the entire time. We don't want to give up the pressure because our comp is pretty good at holding in this like middle choke and this left choke with the Pharah playing above and high ground. So... Generally, after we win a fight, we want to be playing aggressive and taking away their retake potential. Can yeah, the goats team go near train to point an LOS Widow first fight? Oh, they can. Um, but once again, the Widow isn't important. The Widow is there for me to stay alive. The Widow is like an extra thing. Um, so they can. It's better than what they did, 100%. I agree with you on that. Um, but the Pharah is still really good there. We just need to not overextend and play slow good early swap by saucy who will now have this high noon perfect to buy more time well especially since fusion university took a so gator takes some damage they give up like if you have two support ults and we have none fucking fight us like what why are you backing up like what what is the goal of playing this slowly give us time to build ults you're also focusing our monkey as primal like that's just insane a lot of damage coming into this like, you just put all of the damage in the start of the fight into our monkey. He primals. And you gave us positioning, which is insane. Fight, so Chancic's gonna have to use that primal. Chancic now gets to make a shitload of space because he got primal off for me and Alarm to push up and get room. In defensive, that Saucy has that high new, that Forces trance with primal as we diva bomb. Really good diva bomb here for a couple reasons. Um, the important thing you need to know is the Diva Bomb is going to try to cover Chancic getting out with his ult. It's not really made to get kills, it's made to zone. Chancic, in the chaos of the Diva Bomb, kills the Brig. It's a huge play by him. Look at how close Sugar Free was to Rally. Rally is super important here. And so far, we've traded both of our tank ults, as soon as Chancic dies, for one kill... 
right? So we traded Chancex ult, Bernard's ult, and Chancex life for Sugar Free's life and Trance. That's an awesome trade for us. And Alarm is about to have Trance. So they beat here. We call it a play slow because we just want to stay alive. Really good zoning again by Bernard, making sure the McCree can't push up while they're beating. It's also a good bubble by Nice to like coordinate that pressure. And like, look at this. We're still just playing slow. And like, what are they going to do? Now we're even and now we're close to our support ults because they fed. Uh, an alarm calls to dive with Trance as soon as he gets it up. So Snillo goes aggro here. We know we have Trance incoming. That's why Snillo's going aggro. We're bubbling Snillo because he's the closest thing we have to a main tank at the moment. Sorry, my bad. If they counter swap your initial comp, would you swap immediately ever or always take the unfavored fight? We'd always take the unfavored fight just because we're trying to stall as long as we can. Doesn't matter if we lose that fight because we can always swap to a more favored comp. Snillo pressures. It's close, but we get transform and we get Hawks mech, so it's really good aggression all around. Um, as soon as we trance, obviously, we just want to push and kill their backline as quickly as possible. Don't want to give them any chances for picks. We kill everybody. They they primal. I can only assume they primal because they want to swap Brine Goats. And they're stalling, so it's actually not a bad primal. I like the primal. You don't see very often. No alarm, not just good for um, or defensive trances, but maintaining that momentum just when I kinda like Monkey here more than I like Ryan for a retake. <sighs> Why is that? Why do I like Monkey more? So there's a lot of high ground the monkey can play off and be annoying. Specifically, our team is pretty good at playing with the monkey goats and playing pretty aggressive into the Ryan goats. They don't have shatter, so I'm not too worried about shatter. Um, we know they don't have Grav, I think is the biggest one about why I called not to swap because they were on McCree, so we don't have to worry about combo. So I'm pretty okay with our comp into their comp at the moment. We fuck up our Grav here, but I mean, I, I agree generally Ryan is better. But given the situation, we can win with Monkey. I do agree, in an ideal world, I would rather be playing here with Ryan than Monkey. When ATL thought that wave was about to break, Fusion University all in, they pop that trance, and they continue the push. No, we're talking ATL about us playing Monkey, not them, Dark. Up are going to have to retake this so, we're scouting, we're trying to set up for just grab, because they wasted both their, they didn't waste, they used both their support ults that fight, so we know we can just kill them by just grabbing. But things are looking pretty good, Hawk red, Um, really I'm helping scout that. where they are, I call them going left side, and then they call them going top left. So far. But first, they got a weather, we call the nice Divas flanking, so we don't That's grab, like and then... I just want to point out, after this fight, Nice apologized a thousand times because he was very aware that this grab was atrocious. So. This grab sucks. We can't follow up on it ever. It's on the high ground. Like, I, I, I don't know I don't know what this grab is, but it's okay. I, I forgive him. <laughs> I was laughing in comms when this happened because it was so insane. So I just called a backup point. I think I called a backup point and focused Ryan with the rally. They diva bomb for some reason. Hawk, I don't know what that bomb was trying to do. You're full HP. Um, and we're very clearly backing up because we have no ults. So, I don't know about that one. Um, why did I push Gator? Oh, I tried to boop him away and I overextend a bit to try to kill him. And they try to focus me and we have to bubble me, which isn't great. I think I overextended there a bit. Um, so it's like some intermediate pressure. They're getting really close to their support ults. Alarm's gonna get his second trance before Dogman gets his, which is huge, but that's just like Alarm being Alarm, and we won two fights. And it's important here, like, when we rotate and pressure high ground, it forces them to back up, and we're just farming time on point and farming ults. From Atlanta Academy, and right now they're all just trying to get to their ults. Yeah, I know, they're jockeying back and forth right here. Dogman will be the... Awesome call by, by a mostly alarm. I'm going to say mostly alarm because everybody was screaming, so, like, it's not entirely alarm, but he was the main person I, I heard say this. They're trancing and pushing. My job when they do this is to try to boop... Okay, so they're pushing someone. That person's job is to not die. My job, as long as they're not pushing me, is to boop somebody out of the trance. We discord and focus them. The first one with the transcendence. Zarya is playing like an idiot and not pushing with the transcendence, thinking 500 HP in bubble, I'm going to be safe. Pops it right away. 
Zarya gets destroyed by me alarm and Neist. Mind you, Snilla was really low and almost dead. Our tanks are getting focused. But they don't kill Snillo, and we kill Saucy when they dive with Trance. So, like, insane play. Be saucy going down. Yeah. Do you think Alarm would be a top tier support in Hell? Undoubtedly. Through the Transcendence, that means Saucy was not able to get that healing as the Retribution. Transic Primals, we trance at the same time. Bad communication, we should have only done one of those. Probably only Primal. Not the end of the world. Something to avoid. You, you shouldn't be stacking, especially Primal with Trance or Demon Bomb with Trance. You don't really need to. Here getting their ultimates, they have a huge advantage coming into this fight, particularly since Atlanta are already lacking those numbers. Um, we have a grav, we clean up, like, there's not much to talk about here. We, when they engage with trance, like, we don't use any ults, and we get a kill in their trance, which is just insane. So, like, that's not even, it's not even comparable, the value we got there. So, I don't really know what, what issue that was, if, if they were calling mixed targets, people got confused on where they were going, but it was, it was definitely, that fight at least was pretty bad on their part. First, you're going to lock this up and go up 1-0 against Atlanta Academy here on Busan. Uh, that would... I think moat is better. I don't know what moat means. We're playing monkey there because we didn't want to swap when we had ult, and then we didn't want to swap because we were worried about getting back in time to fight and choke. Both of those are reasonable opinions. Um, ideally, I would always rather play Rhine, but it's not an ideal situation we were in. It was, I mean, certainly unexpected, at least from me, Boop. I was thinking you know, a little bit more measured. There... Most things are not ideal situations. Most of Overwatch is making the best out of your absolutely terrible situations. They also have tons of That's how I feel about Overwatch in general. <laughs> they go to multiple game five, so they know how to, you know, amp it up in overtime or when, you know, the cars are really stacked against them. So ATL, they just have to recognize that maybe some of their, you know, I think it's fine to call it moat. Oh no, monkey coats is fine. I don't think like it just doesn't make sense to give these things nicknames. Like you're playing goats with a Winston, you're playing goats with two main tanks, you're playing goats with May. Like fuck it, it's all goats, you know. Never really sleep on the enemy. You don't. You don't need to like. You don't need to like put everything in a box. I guess is how I feel. Um. Our defense comp here is to make them not play goats. We think they are a really good GOATS team, so we want to avoid that mirror matchup as much as we possibly can. Um, so we were trying to play comps that were good into GOATS, generally. Fusion University's Farah and Sombra, they got to be bringing their A game. Still, it's a pretty good Sombra. Uh, yeah. and, and, so, uh, and so I'm really excited to see what Fusion University can bring to the table. The EMP self-destruct, you know, potentially even better than the Graviton Surge self -destruct. I'm talking to Nice right now with my gun about where I want him to play depending on the comp they play, For but it's hard to point out. EMP Barrage, also an option yep. on the table. So. EMP is a ah, I like all of those GOAT cycles. abbreviations. So you can't use your shields, you're going to be susceptible to damage. As uh, Saucy, you know, going between a couple characters, but... And we'll decide here eventually. Uh, we're seeing Atlanta Academy run a So they swap. It's totally reasonable. They go a totally fine comp into our comp. I don't think they're massively favored. I think the best comp into us. This might actually be the best comp into us. I don't know if how... I guess I like the brig. So I, I, I think this comp is the best swap for them. Our comp plays pretty much like the Widow comp. Except for I'm a little less scared because I have an Ana healing me. I also have less people I can fly to. And a good swap from Gator as well. You really want to Do I think we'd have the same success? I mean, we didn't scout Atlanta. We just like played them. The scouting we had is they like goats. We like not playing goats and playing comps that are good versus goats. So let's do those. You know? If they were a team that sucked at goats but still played goats, we'd probably say, well, let's just play goats. Like we've never played against that Hanamura comp ever. That was literally just on the fly, us making a plan and trying trying to have it fucking work. And it, it worked amazingly, to be fair, for how much planning we had for it, but like we knew it was there, but we had no idea how to deal with it. We were like, okay, well maybe we just lose Numbani and then we get to pick Lunar Colony instead of Hanamura. ATL, they will have, uh, you know, taken a little bit, a few seconds off the clock, but now they're in a much better matchup against what Fusion University... Yeah, counter strats against GOATS and totally work. You'd have to execute them well. So we're just trying to, like, harass them and play slow. I'm pretty sure Chansek accidentally feeds here. 
It's not really his fault. Like, he drops. It's correct for him to drop. It's good for him to pressure. It's unfortunate Bernard got pressured out at the same time. Bernard should be able to normally save him when this happens. But because Bernard got pressured out a little and wasn't ready, like, they should have communicated this better and not died. But that's okay. It's not a giant mistake. It's a tiny mistake. But I still can't res that based on where he died. If he died closer to the corner, I could have rest. It's at least very good we trade. Down in the middle of Maine here. And so Fusion University knowing what they need to do. Very good hack coming from Snella on that health pack. That's going to be very important for later. I can almost guarantee it. Atlanta Academy, though, you know, they're trying to push their way in here. It's important. I don't know if Anas do this generally or think about it, but it's important to recognize as an Ana that you're a scary hero because you can three-shot any 200 HP target. So you don't want to play Ana like you're scared. You want to play Ana like any time a DPS is peeking you that's not a Widowmaker, you're going to kill them. Because they have to be scared of pushing you or else you're going to get bullied. Get that opening pick. Yeah, but there's very little can you do without your Winston. Sometimes you can't do that, right but, but generally you should try to do it. Now out of it. All of they do a good job zoning Alarm and me, like and then yeah, Bernard gets nice demaxed. Get and get a couple kills from it. Saucy is a down and so this is a I'm just putting it out there. We win this fight, except something very unfortunate happens. It's unlucky. I don't blame him for this. I think it's hilarious. However, this sucks. We played this defense extremely well. We had Demac to the Diva and killed the McCree. Their Brig was still coming back from spawn. This was a picture perfect execution other than one fuck up by Chancic and Bernard. That's minor. And this is just a very sad way to lose that progress. Especially because the tempo this sets for the rest of the fucking map is so bad for us. Like, getting people to get their head back in the game, especially Nice. Like, this has got to be the hardest on Nice. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, man. So, like, Nice just killed himself in a match. Like, that is tilting. So, it's important that no one else on the team gets mad at him. Because Nice can't get in his own head we need nice to play as best he can so it's important that everybody just immediately moves on and we'll make fun of him about it after but it's not it's not ever something you bring up in the middle of a match ever in any situation for any reason that's just important to recognize well, did we make fun of him after line. of course of, of course we made fun of him after <laughs> Dogman, though, gonna use that transcend. It's not gonna let that, you know, distract him. He's university or in the back foot here. They do lose the point. That is a, the definition. I mean, we just suicide because we we don't want to get both charge and we also want to swap. Um, feels bad, man. Yep. So we yeah, choose to say Sombra because we have EMP, but I think that means Nice should go Brig. Why did Dogman trance? I don't wow. know. The most well-built streetlight in the history of the world um he wanted to press q it's not awful okay so let's look at it from the be the best possible scenario in his head he just saw the Pharah kill himself. He thinks he's in a 5v6. He does. He sees Hawk is low. He knows um, Saucy's dead, right? So they have no McCree and they're in a 5v5 and he doesn't know if he's winning the fight. I think it's very reasonable to trance. It turns out horribly, but his intent behind it is not terrible. So without being in their comms, I can't say if it's a good or a bad trance. He could have asked and someone else said yes they needed it it's really close it's not clear when he presses q that they're winning this fight i'd argue they're actually not except for nice killed himself and that makes it like even so Will be taken down. yeah and he could be worried about them emp us emping and re-engaging like there's a ton of stuff he didn't know chancic was gonna die like a ton of stuff nice in the end dogman though gonna use that transcend it's not gonna let that you know distract him. and like we just call it a go point and die we die late which sucks 
Dying late means we get like one real fight in second, which means they're probably going to snowball because they have ult advantage. But that is a, the definition of our goal in second is just to make them use as many ults as possible. Uh, yeah, that barrage can blow through we stay somber because the EMP can do that. One street sign is just way too much of an ass. Dogman has to be feeling like the world's luckiest Zenyatta right now. Why isn't that guy making the railings? Yeah, come right? on. Like, why isn't that guy making the railings? Y'all going to take that win and roll the potential for that primal so much money what are they talking about structure but atl gonna take that win and roll with it they have hawks bomb talk about our comp swap talk about why we're staying on sombra instead of swapping brig like don't talk about the street sign <laughs> like wh what <laughs> okay so we're we're we know they have beat we know they don't have trance we have primal we want to we want to dive force beat with our primal and then emp after we get a bit antsy with the emp into that I'm They're not. I, I'll rewatch it carefully to see whose fault I think it is, oh, if anyone's fault, or if it's unfortunate. Chancic dives, Chancic primals. So we engage without really being able to shoot anybody, which sucks. Dogman's low, Gator's low. They're rallying. Okay. Will we be seeing that? Atlanta Academy only have the two ultimates. They will have the three with the support ultimates. Rally is going to be popped here very soon. So we're Diva Bomb EMPing. That EMP hits only Zarya, and Zarya would have died to the Diva Bomb anyway because she didn't have bubble. So idea behind the play is great. They read us like a book and counter it perfectly. That sucks. Do I think, do what I want Snello and Bernard to go for this play in the future? Yes. We stayed on Sombra because we had EMP. That's why we didn't swap Brig. The idea is we want to start building the grab before we go into third because we know we're probably losing this fight anyway. So I don't, so it's important when looking at a play to think about it in the bigger picture. So let's think about it from a fundamental point then the situation, and then the execution. So the fundamental point of this play is they're pushing cart, EMP makes them immobile, Diva Bomb kills them. That's a reasonable fundamental play to try to execute. The situation is the Brig is high ground, the Lucio's not on point, you only really see the tanks. The tanks are pretty spread, so it's hard to EMP. The execution is the Diva Bomb's already going in, Snillo feels obligated to EMP here, that judgment call in the moment is really fucking hard to make. I agree with it on a fundamental level. I agree with it in a situational level to an extent. I don't like the ex or I agree with it to an execution like the, the way we timed it. I just don't necessarily like the call to go for it. But it's one of the things you let them learn from that. You don't say anything bad about it. I don't think it's the best play we could have done. I do think we could have played this fight slower, like no one's in danger of dying and we're really close to trance, so by EMPing here, we're inviting them to beat, whereas if we just play the fight slow, they can't actually ever use beat. Granted, they're also about to have trance, so it gets messy, um, but like it's important, it's important to recognize that plays like this, there is a reason behind them, and it's generally not incompetence that causes people to fuck up these combos. It's generally a very large variety of variables that you have to like think about and like talk through so you're not just flaming people for no reason. Like if that gets Dogman 2, we win this fight, right? Like important, it's important to think about that. If that got two kills, we win this fight 100%. It doesn't fucking matter that they beat. So like that part of it's really cool. And we still almost kill... Bernard is going to get the one kill on no particle barriers for it. And we kill Gator. So we are up two. It's just everybody's super low. So like that play, if it killed two people and we kill Gator, 100% we win this fight. Um, it was just slightly unfortunate. This is a bad news bears for Atlanta Academy right now. So I totally like the play. I think it was a good play by then. I would always like them to go for those cool split second on the five plays in the future. Thumbs up. Somehow Atlanta again committed both support ults and rally. I'm not sure. Like, why did they trance? For Atlanta Academy right now, as Hawko bringing this back. Oh, Dogman was gonna die. We probably win this if he doesn't trance. Okay, so we somehow are winning this fight. <laughs> so, this is actually 
the beat the beat was kind of instinctual after the EMP I don't know how needed it was if it got Gator it would have been really good but it didn't get Gator Saucy's pants felling that Zarya, but Hawk, once again, we talk about this guy's ability to position, find those crucial cleanup kills, and Hawk, the caster's really like hyping you up. Hacked, Beautiful. Even hacked. He was. What did I, if they have EMP, whatever, called a beta, just keep playing safe and split until they use it? Really depends on the situation. So. Like, so much so that it's almost. I can't answer that question confidently. Very commonly on any map that's not King of the Hill, it's okay to just die to the EMP and reset because their comp is generally pretty shit if they're playing Sombra. Generally. And yeah, if the team that you're baiting realizes you're baiting, they can do so many things that, that fuck you. So it's really important when you're baiting to like bait in a way that you're not weakening your position but still playing it's it's a very like complex issue that's really map dependent and fight dependent uh we go goats on third because we have to hold for five minutes and there's no other comp we're going to hold for five minutes with also it's just like a good comp on third there's no high ground to play off really goats is generally best on maps with no high ground and no chokes um so this is a weird fight they engage with Diva Bomb. We do a good job of peeling. Our Brig loses shield and our Zen can't get away from it, so he has to, he has to trance. We pin their Zarya, but we don't kill her. Which sucks. Right here, we need to be going way more aggressive into them with this trance. Um, this is a good bash by Sugar Free to knock Chansik away. If Chansik's allowed to swing to them, it would be really strong. This is not the patch with the shield Brig. Nerf. Very sure. Then they rally. We're not really at advantage anymore, but we have beat coming up and we have grab. We know they still don't have a support ult. But like, I can't beat this and Chansik just gets blown up. It's it's half good focus by them, half us fucking up. Like, where does he really take all this damage? That swing on the D.Va kills him. That's it. That one swing he did on the D.Va got him discorded and he lost half his HP. That killed him. Which is fucking stupid if you think about it, but it's whatever. Like, that's why main tank is so hard is because, like, that one tiny decision he made lo loses us the fight <laughs> in, like, an insane way. Surge in the sound barrier, which is going to be launched at the same time for this fight. They're still going to be behind after it. Hawk v is a nice consolation prize, but they definitely wanted a little bit more, especially since Hawk is... So we're just stalling. Gator, very far away from that earth. It's important to notice we're stalling, but we're not dying, and it's really important we're not dying, because we don't want to get staggered. Shattered, but I can't see the same thing from Saucy on that Graviton Surge. This payload... We also know they have Grav, so we're playing Split. We didn't talk about the momentum, but all of a sudden you blink. We're here on the third point with four minutes left. They grab Chansik. I don't like this Grav. It's not awful. Now, Graviton Surge coming... But, like, what are you doing to kill him? From Atlanta Academy are get sick into the Our Diva Bomb forces trance and zones from the grab. Huge value Diva Bomb by Bernard. We D Mech Hawk while they're trancing, and their Zen chases him down instead of them all focusing our Rhine, which is insane. Sugar Free almost dies because they're off in this fucking land fighting Nice, who's just solo D Mech their Diva. And then I'm chasing them away, and for some reason they're looking at me, so we're just pushing them in. We grab. We don't kill anything in the grab, because Goats is a great comp. We trade Transic for Sugar Free. We have Trance, though, so it's okay. They did use both support ults and grab. So we call they have Shatter. We're super worried about Shatter, and the Zen is flanking. We're super worried about the Zen. Gator swings himself to death for some reason and as soon as gator dies we obviously we're up one we can just push and trade okay so on this on this emp thing 
a, a mistake I see a lot, and we make it a lot on Fusion Uni, and I'm trying at the moment to develop the terminology in game with this specific roster to try to explain what I what I want when I call for this play. But if you know they have something, right? You know they have combo. You know they have shatter. They're trying to set up for that play. That is their call. You are in an advantage position in a sense where you know what their plan is and you know what they're trying to do. So you want to try to fight in the spot that is most horrible and most awkward for them to do whatever plan they're trying to do. And it's important as an IGL and even as a team in general to be able to understand where those positions are and and accurately plan for them and track them and plan for them. So if you know they have EMP, you don't want to just sit there and wait. Like, that's a fucking terrible plan. They'll just kill you or they'll just EMP and you'll die. What you want to do is you want to say like, okay, Sombra's going to be setting up, right? So we know they're not going to push until Sombra's set up. So that means as soon as they start pushing, the Sombra's probably set up and ready to EMP. So let's either fight them before they start pushing so they're not set up. Or, as soon as they start pushing, we're going to completely disengage because they know the Sombra is ready to EMP. Like, those are two calls that you can make that are good against Sombra EMP. And obviously, it's not great, and they still have a really powerful ult. They're going to use that fight, and it's still going to be a hard fight. But just saying, like, we're going to wait there is not... That's not an okay plan to make. That is a way you, you lose fights you can win, and you lose fights where you have ult disadvantage because you're not making plans. You're just trying to, like, call when to use ults. So it's it's important that you understand fundamentally how to play against ults rather than just with your own ults. And I think the GOATS meta has kind of damaged a lot of people's ability to do that given how ult reliant a lot of the fights end up being. Sorry for that tangent. They just walk in there and dare you to stop them. Even down a man 5v4 against Fusion University. Walt Sombra sent from the direction you want to disengage to? Um, She can. Depends on the map. In the position. The gator was on that payload. He had a big shield, and if he so, like right here, we're setting up to bash shatter. We think they have shatter. We think they have rally. So we know they're going to rally and push our Rhine, and then look for bash shatters. So that means when they rally, we want to speed back so we can trade speed amp for rally. That's a that's a positive net gain. Then we want to, as they try to over, our goal is they overextend into us, right? So maybe they use their speed amp with their rally to try to go for the bash shatter. We want to counter bash their Rhine and kill them. Because they're going to be overextending, looking to make sure their play happens, and we're going to punish that. I would always rather obtain good results. I'll be honest. If you hold an ult for three points and I'm on your team, I'm going to call you bad. Because that doesn't mean that you didn't get an opportunity. That means that you were too scared to do it. I'd always rather someone make the bad play rather than making no play because you can at least learn from the bad play. The only thing I can tell you if you made no play is make play, like make a play, right? I can't tell you like, this is the perfect play in the perfect spot. I can't give you criticism or information. I can just say like, you didn't do anything, right? Like that's, that's bad. That's bad for player development. That's bad for team synergy. That's bad for old economy. It's, it's bad for everything. And now rally from sugar free goods buffing ATL into this. So they rally, we're disengaging. I don't have to use speed amp. I think I actually did use speed amp there. We're waiting for them to overextend into our run. We know they're going to because that's their plan and we're trying to punish it. We're letting Snillo stall the cart because they're still trying to focus our Ryan. And we're all focusing Gator. We're all shooting Gator. Because we want to make sure he can't push with full HP. Um, Bernard loses mech. Okay, can we appreciate the discipline on Bernard's part here? Bernard has Diva Bomb. It's the last fight on the point, and Bernard makes the the decision to not Diva Bomb when he loses mech. That is a small thing, but it's very important. His ultimate. Chong Sick now looking for the red opportunity. So far, they're pushing him back. They're unable to actually get him into a position to earth shatter. They so they earth shatter, right? They go for their play. We earth shatter, we don't get very many people. Both me and Alarm didn't get shattered. So Alarm knows he's going to trance the shatter. We're going to stay alive. So now we're in a brawl. Both teams have used shatter. We use grav. We force their trance. That's great. So we're still at a parity fight. We don't have mech, so we're a little behind, but we're trading ults effectively. That's good. Huge pin by Chancic. 
Theron grab their tranced. He can still get a pick with the pin. Brig is always the best target to kill like that. You can only kill Lucio or Brig, so I guess like Brig is more valuable than Lucio, but generally you look for the Brig. Pins the Brig. Huge pick. Brig is one of the most important people at stopping us from stalling cart because of her stun. A little bit more vulnerable, but he's going to get the kill onto Sugar Free with that pin, so this is a 6v5 from Fusion University. They grab us. Kind of sucks. Chancic has another shatter, by the way, which is insane. It doesn't hit anybody, but it's still insane. Um, and they diva bomb. So I can't beat earlier to save Snillo because either way, Snillo's dying. I'm beating to try to save Chancic because the Snillo's dead regardless. So if that makes sense, like if I beat earlier, the diva bomb kills Snillo, and if I beat later, they both die. Or Snillo dies and Chancic lives. So it's like way better to beat at the right time for Chancic than at the right time for Snillo there. Can you explain why you're playing so defensively? I don't see how they would lose the fight if they speed with someone because your Ryan is a little further back. Um, We are using our cooldowns and threatening them with ults, right? So let's look at the start of the fight. Onward. So right here we have Shatter and they know it. So they can't just speed bas speed boost past our Rhine. So they're focusing our Rhine. They can't speed boost anywhere. They can try to go on Snillo. That's not a terrible play, but we have Bubble. So it's not going to end up super well for them. So it's a stalled fight because they're trying to build ults. And they know we have ults. Still a stalled fight. They demac Bernard. That's a that's a good proactive thing that they've done so far. They shatter only Snillo. Not terrible. They're investing an ult for it though. I push up and I boop their Rhine away so he can't get pressure. By me booping the Rhine, yes, I do stop this shatter from going off. But like, it's really important when they go for shatter plays, you use your boop to displace the Rhine. We trance Snillo lives. If they can get the pin off, Snillo probably doesn't live there. We follow it up with Grav to try to force a support ult. We do get a kill even though they trance. And now we're in a, a 6v5 even though we lost mech. So like, they didn't really have an option in that fight of when they can go aggressive. They make the grab play. Snillo's rally never saves him here. Like, look at the people shooting him. He has a Zen shooting him from one side. He has a Zarya Ryan flanking him. He has a Diva Bomb above him. The Lucio's ready to boop him after the grab ends. He never lives here. It's good, good forethought. Good. It's a good play on his part to not commit rally to this fight. And now the it's like these fights being disciplined in these fights in particular is like super high pressure, but super important for like good Overwatch. Bomb. Nothing oh. to it. You gotta work. So Chancic lives and he's way the fuck out in the middle of nowhere, but he's buying us time to start resetting. So like, yes, he de he dies, but whatever. Like they used literally six ults and we used four. And they have two kills. University, though, you know, Saucy does get that. Really, one kill because their brig is coming back. Kill, so this is not a done deal. We diva bomb to stall. It's important that Bernard didn't diva bomb earlier because now he has diva bomb now. They kite own. back. They also use bubble there. One, so the rest of University are able to and mind you, like we're just playing in a way where they can't really do anything super aggressive, and we force a grindy fight. I don't know what Gator did to charge over there, but he takes way too much damage and gives us tempo. Like, by, by going over here, he gives us tempo, they stop pressuring payload, they take unnecessary damage, and we have rally. And we have Hammond, because, like, who doesn't like Hammond? I'm not sure if Hammond was a great swap, but it turned out pretty good there. What's that? Is that Hoats? Right Hammond Goats? University. Oh, it was such a close thing. They Obviously, he swaps back Ryan because he should never stay Hammond, but it's fine to recontest with. And so we still have grab. We still we have another grab. We still have or we have another grab, another trance. Um, and they use a lot of their old economy. So we're like still at, at a parody fight. We've now been holding this point for like two and a half minutes. It's pretty good. Boats, ball goats. I like it. I like it. A lot of really good plays from the Lucio on the defensive side. Save that sound bear at the right time, waiting safe in the trees, away from the rest of ATL. Those are the. So they rally. Good consistent things that Fusion University are doing right now. Like what are what are you doing with this rally, Sugarfree? 
plays from the Lucio on the defensive side save that sound bear at You want to use Rally to force bubble cooldowns and force them back. Right time waiting safe. Because like Rally makes your break fucking a monster. In the trees. So they rally really early here. And like they're not speed boosting. They're just like chilling. And we're just chilling. And then I boop them both back because they're being weird. And a lot of that armor is already gone from some members. We're just still team. waiting, and then they like all speed on our Rhine and we grab them because this play is terrible. Don't speed on the Rhine like this. Like this point is really strong for defense goats because the fights are long and stagnant. So unless you're dying to combos, which we end up dying to a combo, mind you. Like this is this is a bad play. Play slow. The Atlanta Academy are gonna be victim to that unwilling hug on that Graviton Surge and they're Unlucky they didn't have trance, but like even if they have trance, it's still <laughs> They're so out of position and so split. And so Fusion University gonna get the team wipe on Atlanta Academy, who now have only a minute left. Yeah, the best way to think about it is on this point, and on two CP defenses, trading players is always favorable for the defense. So you should always be trying to trade players. And that doesn't mean you use your ults aggressively. That means you want to use your ults reactively. What's the least? No, Brig ult's amazing. Um... All of the ults are really impactful in goats, but I'd probably say shatter just because the times you shatter and they get to trance or beat are so fucking many and the number of things that can block it or stun you are so many that it's like insanely hard to get value out of compared to all the other ults. Brig rally is, is really strong because it's like a low risk, high value ult. I mean, Brig ult is one of the most important things that makes the comp work, so I don't think it's fine saying Brig ult is bad. Brig ult is arguably one of the best ults in the comp. Not only does it give your Zen and your Zarya increased survivability, but it also gives her move speed and increased survivability and lets her pressure the enemy Reinhardt. Okay. Monitor. That's great. Just unplug on me. Enjoyable. Hold up. Let me just real quick move my things back over to the other monitor so they're not here. Okay, cool. We're back. <clears throat> Dog man. Ooh, yeah, it is very close. The new brig patch has changed that though. Not really. Absolutely need to. These guys might not soft reset, but that would have been a full reset. I mean, I haven't scrimmed it yet, so I don't know. But so we just traded our diva bomb for the tempo they got off their rally. No, we just traded Diva Bomb for Trance. That's fine. It's not bad. We don't have Grav, so there's no reason to try to save it. Although it is probably too aggressive of a play. They grab us, we Trance. I fuck up here. I need to not get Shattered. I got Shattered here because I thought I was far enough away from Gator and I thought he was going to be going to the Grav. He doesn't. He shatters me and Chancic. So I shouldn't be able to get Shattered. Chancic shouldn't have dropped Shield to get Shattered. If I beat here, we win, but I'm shattered, so two of us die because both me and Chancic made individual mistakes. Three of us die. So, good play from Gator to notice we fucked up. Bad play from me and Chancic to fuck up. Definitely on the back foot on this defense. They're going to knock an opportunity to defend once again as Atlanta Academy at the very end of their I don't want to talk about a new patch because I haven't scrimmed it. It seems silly to talk about. We're losing the... Uh, All of my opinions would be speculation, and speculation is meaningless. I think the best old... Well, I don't know, like, it's not... First of all, breaking down ults by their relative value in a vacuum is stupid. Like, sure, ults might have relative vacuum in a... Relat eh. Ults might have relative value in a situation with specific circumstances. I.e., we only have grab and shatter, and they have transcendence. So we don't kill anybody if we grab. Important mental note. But in a vacuum, there is not enough information... To make any real informed opinion that is not just objectively bad, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. So if you want to look at every individual fight and talk about 
when ults have value and what things you can do with them, I think it is more common that you can make a proactive play with Rally that benefits your team in the team fight than you can with Shatter. Good so far. They, they finish the map. That's exactly what you want in this kind of situation. Professional players get access to something called the OPR, which is the Overwatch Professional Realm, um, which pretty much has all of the current patches being played in tournaments that you can download. Right, a match. They finish the map. That's exactly what you want. It's, it's only contenders and up. I guess open and up, maybe trials and up. You want in this kind of so we notice they're close holding us. Transic sees it. This is a T Taurus moment, but situation. Fusion University gonna try to match that. First thing we do when they're speeding into us, who do we want to focus? Pop quiz. Who do we focus? I want to see what people think because I think it'll be interesting. So it is 100% Brig. But the reason it's Brig is that if you focus the Zen, the Brig can E the Zen. And the Brig cannot E herself. And the Brig E heal is a lot of fucking healing. So you want to kill the Brig here. A, because she's going to be overextending. But B, because if she heals herself, or if she heals the Zen and we focus Zen, we probably just lose the fight. That is, they are going to come out of spawn with Nice on that Pharah. And Nice on the Pharah can pop off. We've seen it before. 21% on that old charge. You want to do a quick little change because the success particularly the fair is determined by how fast you can get that rocket barrage um and as soon as we kill the brig like their comp falls apart and we just walk through them in that sense, but which like they went for a greedy play i don't think they knew what comp we were playing like when they were initially called for the play and we we punished them and it's almost impossible for them to retake i'm pretty sure they come close because we fuck up but punished for it sugar free the brigida one of the uh, one of the heroes with the most sustain in the world going down Call first, and that's a good look for your defense. But ATL do have another chance to recontest, but it's going to be a lot harder with Hawk. Okay. Yo, look at how good I am to randomly skipping to a moment. Can we just appreciate that real quick? That's crazy. So good. Please mind you, audio is slightly desynced, so it's not an exact sync. It will be slightly off. So if you hear things being slightly off, like just chill. <laughs> Gotta try. So they've Good. Oh, uh, they play play close. They play close. Uh, I'm healing Bernard. Healing Bernard. Care. Uh, uh, nice point. Push point. Alarm Push point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go Oh, yeah. Set up nice. their high ground, okay? So watch out, they can watch out take. maybe uh, one more fight. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. 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 one more. They can, they can, they can. Oh, God, they can. One more, one more. Yeah, one more. Shut up, Pass now. They might go behind. Tiba, 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 yeah, break, break, keep focus, break, focus, break. Break one, break one. Ten inside, ten inside. 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 Ten inside, gonna be a clusterfuck so that's okay it's okay for it to be like that we did cap the point we did a good job reacting it's desynced so it looks a bit weird can i play one more uh sure i'll play it from when we go point in our reset oh, 
It's also a bit awkward that we are a trilingual team. I told Nice I was healing Chansik there and he went a bit aggressive. So, I do want to comment on the target focus thing. If you are of the opinion that target focus should be done by one person, you are actually insane. Not only have you not played Overwatch at a high level, but you also don't fundamentally understand how chaotic a game of Overwatch is at a professional level. So, one person target calling is great. They don't see everything. So, like, sure, we know in our head if Alarm's calling a Discord target, that's the primary person we're shooting. That's fine. We know that's happening. When I saw Zarya at 1 HP on point, I immediately screamed, Zarya's 1 HP, kill the fucking Zarya. Because she has to die, and I see it, and I hadn't heard it yet. So, like... In an ideal world, sure, everybody has one role in communications, but like that's not, as we've been talking about, Overwatch is not a clean, ideal world. Um, Snillo does speak English all the time. My point is there's just a lot of languages in the team that can be difficult. Yes, there's a language barrier. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the heroes with the most sustain in the world going down first and that's but i just wanted to point that out because i feel like a lot of people do think that overwatch is some like clean cookie cutter game and it's really not like when i wanted like if i want to describe a game of overwatch especially in goats meta like it's like a clusterfuck with some cooldowns and a lot of pixels on your screen and nobody can see everything and that's why communicating is good. How good is Alarm's English now? He can understand a lot. A good look for your defense, but ATL do have another chance to recontest, but it's going to be a lot harder with Hawk out of mech. Oh, yeah, you can always fix the comms, but uh, A, we're a new team with three new members. B, we're trying to have four native Korean speakers learn and speak in English, which is an insane task. C, we're in contenders where you don't really fix problems like that. It takes a long time to. Most of your job in contenders is just to be winning. So close. It's like in Overwatch League, you should have way more time to fix problems like that. In contenders, you just don't. Like, contenders is short as shit. Com sounded great to me. <laughs> I also thought it was fine. I think that I yelled a little too much about who I was healing. I don't know if it was important when I was saying it. And I wanted us to be more talkative about where they were coming from, but I think it's fine. Another time. Yeah, it's also a match. Everyone's going to be yelling and it's going to be chaotic. People don't yell like that in scrims, obviously. But, like, everybody wants us to be winning. So, so after the fight, we end up winning. And he, just like at the opening, I, I feel like he only had 38% to start off because everybody else was killing ADL so fast he couldn't shoot rockets at them. Now he gets back into the fight and he may well have to switch and give up this barrage as the point was already won. But regardless, that does mean that Fusion University set a pretty impressive time bank heading into Streets phase and looks like they will be keeping with this composition. Hold on to those ultimates, you know, see what you can get. You never know. Might well be a 4k barrage. But they might be forcing it. They might not have done this particular comp here on street stays but because nice um so we originally were gonna swap i called to stay because they didn't swap and we had a lot of ults i wanted to get value out of our valk and our barrage um they didn't go mccree because they were close to grav and we knew this so we just tried to play a bit back look at how tanky that fucking zenyatta is that's disgusting that zenyatta's tankier than almost anyone on our team I just want everybody to think about that. That's insane. Given the amount of armor he has, he might actually be the tankiest person in the game. Maybe not tankier than Zarya. But it's, it's, that's gross. You're feeling pretty good if you're Fusion University. But they, they rally push. We're just playing slow and focusing people. 
you know, this time there wasn't a... I just want to point out, I don't know if it's like the meta or what, but pharaohs just die when they press Q all the time, dude. Fine in the way, but there was a D bus, so, so <laughs> they get the D mech, but Nice is going to lose his life for that rock. There's a mistake, they allowed Sugar to kill two at the end of the last contest. Much longer to go. Uh, no, I chose to let Chensik die here so I could res him. And him demecking the D.Va is fine, as long as the D.Va doesn't die. The D.Va does die, which is unfortunate, but, like, it's still fine. I let Chensik die there instead of healing him because I wanted to res him and I knew I could get it off because I watched Ajax use boot for some weird reason. Sugar Free wasn't in bash range. Um, so not really. In an ideal world, could we avoid those deaths? Probably. Realistically, does it matter at all? No. The five ultimates. You're feeling pretty good. If How good do I think Snow is? I think Snow is really good. Um, he's a really smart and flexible player. He has a lot of good ideas about what to play when. His his hero pool is is very. It's currently expanding a lot from what his comfort zone was. So. I enjoy having him as a teammate. Thinking about it, <laughs> you know, this time there wasn't a sign in the way, but there was a D bus. So, so. We have played Pharah before Nice joined. We had decided communally we were not a Pharah team. <laughs> they get the D mech, but Nice is going to lose his life for that rock. Mostly because who are used Pharah was like fine, but all of his other heroes were just insane. Like, why would you not play him on Genji or Doomfist? really, really wanted to use it still. Um, either way, though, we barrage, we end up killing Gator, and we demec the D.Va, I go to res nice. They beat in essentially a 4v6. Seems questionable. Seems bad. And they transfer these both support ults and rally and grav. Something we don't really see very often on these Pharahs, but, you know, it's a site for sore eyes, for sure. Oh, yeah. And Where is, who are you? He's on Meta Athena in Korean Contenders. Those kills as well. Uh, Elk rezzing nice on those streets phase, choosing to stick with this composition, <sighs> heading into point B. Uh, ATL may well just give this up. They do have Saucy on the McCree now. The question is, are they actually going to be able to get there in time to contest? Looks likely, uh, but this is one of the hardest points to hold in Numbani. No, Snow is amazing. I like him as a teammate. A yeah, what are the major differences between nice and who are you um land experience and hero pool so like nice is a lot more flexible in the heroes he can play whereas who are you is like who are you is the best genji and the best doom fist i've ever played with and it's the the level of play he is at especially with genji is so unparalleled to anyone else on any other hero it's insane like who are you can play Genji into any comp and just be like, yeah, this is working. And we're like, wait, but they're on goats. He's like, yeah, that's okay. I'll kill the brig with like a right click dash, right click, and then I'll blade and kill three people. And you're like, oh, okay. Like we had a fight in a scrim against XL2 last season where him and I are on point in a one, in a 2v5. And without blade, he kills four people. Like, he reflects a Zen right-click into the Lucio, he dash right-click melees, kills the Zen, dash right-click kills the McCree, kills the Zarya, dies to the Reinhardt, and it's like, that's just an insane amount of skill he has on Genji. How close is EQO? I don't think I've seen EQO play Genji, or played with him on Genji. Who are you's Tracer is also very good. I think his communication in English was the weakest point of him as a player on our team, and... That isn't really something you can expect him, considering how young he is, to like easily pick up a second language. Primal rage, but oh. Hawk gonna get the kill on it. I fuck up here. They're primaling. I know I shouldn't go for the res. I get greedy and go for the res, and this throws the fight. Nice pharaohs can be vulnerable to the self destructs is when you're in the air. It's a lot harder to move around, and then the primal rage is gonna get elf in the end. So Sucks that nice died too, but, a, but gets stopped in streets phase. He is eligible. I'm 95 percent sure he's eligible for season three. Only one kill onto so we call the swap and we stay sombra. Staying sombra is good here. That primal rage, hoping to throw people up into that bomb's way. He Mostly because we have EMP again. We don't need to break. Chases her all the way down through the stairs. He's exactly like technically being younger. Yeah, but it's not like in a vacuum where he's trying to like just learn a new language. He's trying to effectively communicate quickly in a stressful environment with a new language, which is the hardest. And he did. He did learn a bit of English. His English is like not bad, but it's like that was hard for him. And I think it's reasonable to say that.
Like a gator won't let you go once you're in his sights. Snilla was able to build up to that other EMP and We use the MP just to kill tanks because we know they don't have support ults. Um, I think we lose this fight. Not a lot of meat, not a lot of available tanking play from Fusion University. Snilla already investing that EMP. The last ultimate is a large. We didn't really get enough done. Like without a break, it's really hard for us to clear cards, so it kind of just sucks. Tubby try hard to subscribe with Twitch Trends. Hog champ. Uh, shooting armor off Zen means he would be at 50 HP. So if you get the Zen to 50 HP, he's probably dead. Considering the armor goes underneath his shields. Generally, I would not. You can sometimes do that with Ryan, but with Zen in particular, it's almost impossible. Oh no, we win this fight because Bernard is a god. Uh, Fusion University, though, almost lost their Zenyatta as well. So, we're full 6v6 here on the payload. So, I don't know what this play is from them. They're up in numbers. They have Trance and McCree, so they want to keep the range advantage. We Dogman just trances. Like, I don't know. I don't know why. But okay, maybe he was getting hacked. Was he getting hacked? Well, so we're full six v six here on the payload. But nope, just just did it. Just pressed Q. Go for it. Why not? Okay. Unlucky. It's not a fat finger because his reaction is to immediately push. It's like clearly an intentional thing. I think. Um, this trance is terrible. It's unlucky. It's not awful, but it's like used way too early, depending on the point. Maybe he thought he was going to get EMP'd. But they should have called. We didn't have EMP. Like, he must have thought we going to get EMP'd. Oh, and Dogman actually maybe put under a pressure, a bit of pressure himself. Pop that transcendence. And they like overextend with it too. And oh my god, this combo. Oh my god. What coordination from Nice and Bernard. Oh. In a big bomb. Amazing combo. We have a, a Bernard classic. Comes up with three and a half. Three and a half kills for a Bernard as they get the payload to the second point. It took them a little while, but with three minutes and 40 seconds left, they know what they need. Getting in contenders is difficult regardless because there's a very high skill cap. There's also a massive difference between the bottom and top of contenders. So it's very different to get signed to Fusion University compared to on a team like Sky Foxes. So it's like... Probably a lot easier to get on Sky Foxes compared to Fooney. It's actually currently impossible to get on Fooney. So good luck <laughs> with that if that's your goal. <clears throat> I'd say the biggest problem Atlanta had was so far, they have made some weird aggressive choices that I do, don't agree with. And they also use their support ults in strange ways to me. I don't really have a favorite caster. I don't really judge people like that, I guess. I don't know. I do think Bernard should have been an owl. I have no idea why he's not, but, you know, I don't get to sign everybody for owl, so unlucky. Chancek should also be an owl. I don't know why he's not, but it's unlucky. Need to finish this map. Fusion University. Who y'all and Tizzy are also not an owl. Like a, lot of, a lot of people. She struggled right before the Beast Halo is also not an owl. The end of point B, but they finally How do I play with Carpe? Yes. What? Get Chancic into Owl, please. Get Bernard into Owl, Alarm into Owl, Nice into Owl. They got it. They got to be feeling good. It's like you know when you're eating a ton of food and you have that burp and you can eat way more. I feel like that's exactly what they saw. Dude, what are the casters talking about? I'm so confused. I feel they're they're talking about like I don't even know. I'm moving Thank on. God, there's a translocator there. Is he's able to get back? To um, legally, the owl age can't be 17, so I would I wish them luck with that. It has to be 18 for legal reasons. Uh, sugar free feeds here. I call. Um, they have beat. We're close to EMP. We're gonna play slow and pressure their front line because we don't want to engage with the EMP because we don't want the Lucio to be hiding. Um, I call to focus the brig. I think Alarm calls to focus the brig. Me and Alarm are just like casually shooting at the corner and Sugar Free peeks the corner and takes a bunch of headshots and dies. It's not the most planned of things. He just kind of eats it and dies. 
zone, so he knows what he's got to do. He's going to be able to be pretty safe on this EMP if he so chooses to. And then as soon as Brig dies, we're just looking to stay alive and make the fight go long. There is an opportunity here, as the Winston is going to come from the high ground and get that Tesla cannon going on the rest of Atlanta Academy. The primal scares us a bit. Nice to miss dies. He doesn't, though, which is huge. If he dies there, it's really bad for us. It kind of stops us from snowballing. There was actually a really brilliant opportunity for Snowlo to pop that EMP once Sugar Free was out of the way, but he held his hand, banking it for this very third push. A really wise move as Fusion University have the overwhelming. It's not about. It's about the the like being in a franchised league is very different than having a full time job. Ultimate advantage, ATL. Can they even touch right here? It looks like they are going to get an opportunity. So, this fight. I'm a little annoyed with Snello. I'm not too annoyed with Snello. Snello's a super nice guy. I very much like Snello. But this fight is silly. Snello made a mistake that cost us this fight. He knows it. I'm not going to annoy him about it. But we call they have beat. We have two support ults. I want to use a support ult to kill their tanks. Force them to use their beat. We EMP. Easy fight. We win. They have to use the support ults because we have support ults. We got a little trigger happy with the EMP. We EMP early, they beat, and it kind of goes to shit. <laughs> and bang for this very third push, and a really wise move as Fusion University have the overwhelming ultimate advantage. ATL, can they even touch right here? Uh, looks like they are going to get an opportunity. We beat, that like, EMP coming from Fusion University is gonna be combined. the beat that they counterbeat with sucks. With that sound barrier, sound barrier coming from Atlanta Academy. But it's like, this is the kind of thing, like, I don't need to go point this out to Snillo, because, like, he's he's aware of this. He even talked about it, like, after this map, I think. Really wanted to take that out with that. But it's like, those split-second things, like, keeping composure in those OT last fights is important. That's why, like, on defense, we did such a good job of it, with, like, our pacing of the fights and, like, when we were, like, comboing Bash Shatters and when we were backing up and all that stuff. And it's EMP, but we're not going to an important note. We're getting the first kill onto Elk, so this is a 6v4. Uh, yeah, and we kind of get murdered. It's okay. To be fair, though, our comp sucks, and we should be on Brig. Um, we just got super lucky with these fights we were winning. After having that momentum, it is How so much macro do you have to do in review outside of comp-based? Dude, I don't, like, it's not that much. Like, you talk about, okay, so in, con in Contender. So I've uh, I've now been in both bubbles, right? And you, you talk about a lot of micro details on an individual level in OWL, right? So you're talking about, like, where you ideally want to be playing as Mercy on a certain point against each comp so that you're, the person you're pocketing kind of understands how to help position you. You don't really get that luxury in Contenders because it's so short, your matches come very quickly, and you're not really playing for long-term improvement. That's I, I retweeted something Nero said about it, which is like, you're not playing in Contenders to improve. You're playing in Contenders to win. And some people can play in contenders to improve, and that's okay, but they're not the people who are going to be winning. The people who are winning are making sure that every week they're like trying their hardest to make sure they win that map. And that's why, even if I'm playing Mercy, if I see somebody at 1 HP, I'm going to be yelling to kill that person, even though I have zero impact on it. Because I know that for us to win that fight is more important than any precedent we have set and stuff like that. Very difficult. You're running so like, the hill and you have that uh, momentum. In an ideal world, you look over it, you say, in this situation, we want to play defensive. In this situation, we want to play aggressive. But you, you can't, you don't want to set rules for yourself that constrict how you think in the game. All of the players in this game on both teams have really good intuition. You don't get to this point without being really generally like smart about how the game works and how to play fights correctly. So... The, one of the worst things you can do is try to impose some artificial rules for them that they're going to blindly follow and end up in a bad spot. But then suddenly you trip I don't know what button I hit for Fusion share, Fusion but that's cool. Though, luckily have a lot of ults to their we swap Brig now because we use EMP and Brig is better. We were only staying somber because we have the EMP ATL train going. Do have a trance of their own. That is so crucial to buy just enough. Primal can do a couple things. Primal ideally splits their Reinhardt and their Zarya or a support and lets us focus that one person. Or forces a support ult. Time maybe Sox can get up to a graviton surge and ATL can continue to hold here as Fusion University still have more pushes after this one. Two minutes. Oh, I like what Atlanta Academy is doing there. So, what is our plan here? We're maybe regrouping. Sox we're playing slow for combo because we're really close to our ult combo and we need one fight. 
So it's an easy to execute combo because we know they only have trance. If they have both support ults, I don't like using the combo in the same way. But here, because they only have trance, I'm pretty confident we can get kills if we execute it. Get up to a graviton we call they push, to and I guess we back up. So we bubble there, and I guess they choose to engage off the bubble. But Transic does a really good job here. Like, after he gets bubbled, he knows he's going to be a target, so he preemptively backs up. Two minutes. We have this good concave where, like, they can't overextend too much because we're kind of attacking them from all angles. We're not in a ball. Oh, I like what Atlanta Academy is doing. They're amping it up and pushing Fuji University. And now we're at advantage again because they just used all their cooldowns to go aggressive. Three wrist rockets. Thank you for the Twitch Prime sub, man. A little further back, and I don't think Fuji University knew what was happening, but they didn't have the tools to do anything. But it's the thing that you saw, like, them doing on attack. You, you can't force a fight on attack. Because you're probably going to lose one or two people, and you really need a, a clean fight on attack to finish off a map, like 2CP. The slow trickle fights are really bad for you. So we're playing slow, which is really good, and we go for the combo when we get a chance. It's good patience by Nice. It's a really This grab is really good because it puts Ajax in a position we can kill him. Fun fact, you can kill anybody through grab with Discord just by focusing them with damage. If the enemy is trancing, you just need a lot of people to shoot them. We have four people shooting Ajax, five people shooting Ajax. He dies in Grav. Easy. And like, the combo doesn't get any kills, but it zones them. It forces Trance. It gives us a free pin. We do a good job cleaning up the fight. Oh, I saw what they were trying to do. They were trying to get them booped upwards for that self-destruct. We've seen Elk do that before. They don't need it. Fusion University getting the kills they need to try to finish this map. And, they're doing it and because of how clean that fight was, even if they trickle into Recontest now, we have so much killing pressure that we're not going to lose the fight. And look at how many ults we saved, right? Like... We have Rally coming up, we have Beat coming up, and we still have Shatter and Trance. Sure as heck could use it as Fusion University rolling into that point C. And indeed so like, that's a really good attack from us. First point was really good from us. We capitalized on a couple of mistakes they made. Second point, we fucked up twice. But the first fuck up was my bad, and the second fuck up um, got covered for by a really well executed combo. Third point was a little rough, but it's not that bad because third point's really hard to get through in general. We did a good job capping with over a minute. So we're here at three to three on Nibani. Was the boop upwards intentional? Yep. Generally, the diva bomb sometimes lands lower than I boop up and they keep their shield up and they die. It's more just to displace. Like, it's not like a set play. It's like something I'm trying to do more. When at Elk on Twitch, whenever the person with the at Elk Twitch lets me steal it from them, which they are not active, but it's an active account, so I can't. It's unlucky. <clears throat> so we had a conversation here about comps, and it was a, it was a pretty short in detail one. Three months. I'm, I'm not positive. But the conversation we had is, if they play the McCree comp, are we favored playing the Sombra Fera? And we're not, we weren't, I wasn't confident, but my teammates were reasonably confident that our comp, it should be better with a minute. Looking at it in hindsight, I think I agree with that. Um... The ideal she had McCree in the ideal position to shoot people. Um, so I like it for a couple reasons, but primarily it has really good high ground control. And with only a minute to cap the point, the ults that they would build that are really hard for us to deal with, like Diva Bomb and High Noon, are probably not going to matter. Whereas our ult that we will get probably before any other ult is Barrage and Nano, and those two ults matter a lot. And positioning more importantly if you're able to with so i do like our hat, comp i would not if we had zen over ana i like the ana a lot here up on that high ground, you have it gives a lot more healing and sustain to your tanks and fair mercy less damage but you don't need damage uh, for this one, but that doesn't seem to matter because there is a Pharah in the air and that hit scans what you need to take them out and they're gonna have to force that armor so chance it gets bursted again I think it, I don't know, like, what was Bernard doing? Okay, Bernard was counter-diving our backline. So that's like a little bit of a miscommunication. I don't think we needed the peel that Bernard gave us. Ideally, he could have been with Chancic. That's something that we will touch up and will no longer be a problem in a week. Um, but important to think about at the moment.
Alarm hits a very big anti, though, which is good. I do think Chancic should be there. He stops them from crossing point pretty effectively, but it's just sad that he died so quickly. I do think we can probably set up a situation with him and Bernard where he doesn't die. Um, Alarm, by the way, just kills McCree. As soon as he throws the nade, I boost him for the nade, and then it connects and he just shoots the McCree once and the McCree dies. Like, what? So much damage. Um, and as soon as their McCree dies, by the way, we win the fight. Because me and Farah effectively, if just given time, end up 2v5ing the rest of their comp. So we just need time at the moment. No, Chancic shouldn't be sad. We 5-0'd group stage. That's PogChamp. 4-0'd Atlanta. Also PogChamp. Like, even they recognize they can't really push without the McCree. It's just, like, way too hard to get through. Because our Pharah doesn't need to play scared. I don't... I don't like this full regroup they did, though. But they have to be keeping an eye to the skies. Hopefully they brought an umbrella because nice so, ready to let it rain rockets. Here we go. Hawk is gonna All men, all men. Okay. They're looking to focus you, Chancic. Play play safe. So that was just like short, but I wanted to point out one thing that Chancic called that was really good. Um, is he notices we hit an anti-nade on like five people, okay? Huge nade from Alarm, but Chancic notices that the monkey dove our Ana and we can't dive. So instead of Chancic like just jumping back and, and noticing he should peel, he makes the call like, we're peeling monkey. That is what we're doing. Nice also does it. And we kill Gator. And they can't push up because they're all anti and low. And we have a great crossfire with our Diva Sombra to stop them from easily crossing point. Like, it's it's great. The McCree throw by overextending? No, they they lose their monkey. Like, I don't know. I think Gator... Mm, I don't want to say Gator threw. Like, it's it's bad timing for them, and it's a good punish from us. Okay? So this is why. They jump. They're all full HP. I think Gator is jumping because they know if they don't focus the Ana at all, they cannot win the fight. That's reasonable. That's reasonable of Gator to zone. Not only do we hit an anti-nade, which forces them instead of going point to back up, but we, yeah, new mic, but we also correctly identify that we should be pressuring the monkey instead of diving them, which is, is a great combination of a lot of things. Like... Nice. This anti-nade, by the way, from Alarm is the biggest dick play so far because he's being dove by a monkey and he goes, it's more important I nade them than I save my T or I save myself. Um, Ready to let it rain rockets. Here we go. Chancic does a good job initially zoning. Turn focus Diva and Chancic and nice peeling for Alarm is huge. As soon as we kill their monkey and we're all alive, like almost nothing they can do. So I see this McCree, and of course, even though I shouldn't be target calling as a mercy, ideally, the McCree's out of position and he needs to fucking die, so I'm gonna yell to kill the McCree with everybody else. It just it has to happen, and I this is a it's a situation where I am a hundred percent confident that it is the right decision, so I'm willing to yell to get it done. That makes sense. So the healing has to go on each other, so that means Saucy's gonna be left without it. Future University. Um, I call to kill the McCree here, or the Zen here, because he's low on point. But I'm pretty sure he gets brig -eed. Look like they are going to defend this point A. Nah, he just kind of like walks away. So I wanted to kill the Zen because he got low. People didn't listen to me, and that's like totally okay and good. Do you know what I mean? Like, I made a call, a target call. And everybody went, no, Elk, that's a stupid call. We're not doing that. And like, that's fine. That's a, that's, a, that's fine.
especially with target calling. That's reasonable, you know? Like, we heard the McCree call. The McCree call made sense. I called a second target. The second target was stupid, so we didn't focus it. Like, that's good. That's fine. We're in the middle of a fight. Barrage to kill Brig might look a little silly, but, like, trading one for one here and we have point control and we can res easily is 100% worth it. It's all good, but it's going to seal things up for Fusion University. Even though he does go down, it doesn't matter. Round three complete. Oh, my God, Jane. Thank you for gifting us up. Also, hi, Jane. Um, yeah, Fusion University setting themselves a very easy condition to... right here. I can't say that tick. name, but... You saw right there, Gator, the first one to go down going a little bit too deep you have to he has to remember that there is a bird in the eye who doesn't need to be walking on the ground or those walkways like the rest of us peons can just be floating up far above able to rain in those rockets it really is you know a test of these Stacious. new tanks okay. to have played Easy. goats for so long and then come up suddenly against dps heroes who can do a ton of burst because i'm gonna call you intact because that's easier two months up for two months in a row pog champ keep forgetting your primes you're resubbing for real now Thank you. You know, tanking is all about taking as much damage as you possibly can. Oh my God! Now you. Get... So, Jeez. You know, that line may have shifted for Gator right there in that last. Uh, Thank you for gifting a sub to Andrus. Oh W, I appreciate it. You know, some different heroes. So many subs. Haven't seen for a while. That yeah, is I insane. Farah being, you know, utilized as a goat's counter for is air to keep him up, and now for their own attack. Okay, so we had another conversation on our attack here. Um, no worries. I'm going to be trying to do more of the calm things. Like I have the full VOD. I'm just going to go through and pick up fights that I want to show a lot of fights on Hanamura. I want to show, but I don't think I have our defense, which is unlucky. Um, so we had another conversation here, which is what can they play that we are not ready for? Right? So that's always the worry. We know if they play dive goats, our comp owns them. We have played it a bunch. We understand it perfectly. Uh, Mercy Ana is better when you have to be playing a more defensive style. Mercy Zen is better when you need pressure. So I start the conversation because I'm always an anxious, worried person. So I go, okay, what can they play we're not ready for? They can play a Bastion comp. What are we doing against a Bastion comp? Like this is the conversation we're happening immediately after we defend. They can play Bastion Comp. What are we doing? It's a Bastion Comp. Well, I want to go Rhine Goats. I want to flank under at a point, go behind them, clear the Bastion off high ground, retake the other side high ground, and fight the Bastion. Really quick plan I can say everybody understands. What happens if they go the McCree Comp? Maybe our comp's favorite in the McCree Comp. We can play it for a bit. Maybe we can swap Goats if we feel like it's not strong enough. So, like, the important thing is immediately after we full hold them, where our, at least I'm thinking and trying to talk about all of the comps that we are not ready for and what we want to swap to because on Hanamura we aren't ready for one of the comps and we take like 15 to 20 seconds in spawn trying to figure out what the fuck to play and it hurt me in my soul that I forgot to talk about it King face we may see something even crazier no okay all right you, you always you always hope it was just a sonic arrow burn get, our back onto his signature hero you get one a day so they're yeah, trying to do the close hold thing again and i just don't like it six times. That's like, okay. like like, we're not stupid. This feels like you expect us to be stupid. Like, we have alarm playback. We're all thinking, what if they close hold us? What if they're all playing in the right room? What if they're all playing, like, hiding on point? We're all being, like, very aware, clearing stuff, making sure alarm is never close enough to get dove. ATL now with Gator on this Winston also going to have a lot of and we, ability. But so it's just like I'm just going to I'm just going to go point, guys. Already put on the point. You only have 30 to give. Uh, nice and a really good angle for Scant Atlanta Academy to really decide. This is a really good angle that nice plays is, where I can be really safe University and still pocket him and he gets a lot of value. Scant Atlanta Academy decide how they want to get on this point cuz they are going to eat rockets regardless. Hawk's going to be So the one Gator to get takes a shitload of damage has to disengage from our Diva and our Zen. Their Diva shifts in because they feel obligated. Why does Hawk shift in? Hawk gets bubbled and ships at Pharaoh Mercy. Waste of a bubble! First of all, don't bubble your diva when she's doing that. She's not the one taking the damage. Bubble your monkey. Like, now your diva just dies anyway because she's so fucking out of position. Like, wh like, what is this? You have, like, Lucio here healing nobody, speeding nobody. Sugar Freeze on point, who was kind of zoning the monkey and the Sombra a bit. Saucy's in main, who was kind of zoning the frontline a bit. Ah. Uh. Hawk is just feeding. I don't know. Uh, I don't know what the plan was here. Maybe he thought they were going aggressive. It's, it doesn't turn out well. 
the sky, and he's not, he's gonna be taken down very, very low because of it. He's gonna get demacked, actually, Ooh. so that is a huge early kill for Fusion University, and while we talk very highly about Hawk, maybe he's trying to do a little too much there. Far is one of the only... And, like, as soon as we push them back point, they cannot win the fight. It's such a favored position. Bert, Sneller shouldn't die here. I'm not sure how he died, but it, like, doesn't matter. We're in such a favored position that losing it is almost impossible. Direct counters to the bird in the sky, and now it's just a shooting gallery. I'm also calling to focus the Zarya here because she was pushing alarm, and I'm trying to keep make sure alarm stays alive. Literally bombing out. That's unlucky. That's just a good play by Dogman. Dogman is able to get the better of Nice, but in the so meantime, this point iris. going the way. The trance would matter if his team had stayed alive. Way of Fusion University. Is my chat logged? Um. Okay, I don't know what you mean by that. If you mean, if you scroll up in chat, can you see more things or go watch the VOD? Yes, I'm pretty sure you can. Transcend has popped, but there's the only one lonely man. One um, obviously, we focus the Zen immediately out of Trance. Yeah, gonna be neutered there by the very end. And so Fusion University so close to grab I call for Alarm to Trance here because D.Va is too fat and I couldn't heal him. <clears throat> I should have been able to heal him, but D.Va was... Fat. This round of Numbani transcendence though gonna keep Fusion yeah, University yeah. alive. Things are getting a little bit more interesting as the rest of Atlantic Academy oh. are coming back. But Bernard gonna be better with the bombs as well. Definitely winning. Oh no, our comp match. just like smacks goats. Like the Pharah Mercy Zen Pharah Mercy Ana stuff is like just really, really good into goats. And I think that on some maps like Numbani and like Busan whatever the train map is, like, we're just favored. And you're not able to say we're not favored because we're beating the GOATS teams, so get wrecked, Cylinders. we're favored. Alarm has found Dogman across the map more times than not. So just what I think about hero bands? I have not put enough thought into the plausible reality that could be hero bands because it is so not relating to my reality, is how I feel. <laughs> No, train map on Busan. Um, whatever the first or second map we played was. Good night, Jamie. Um, downtown? Wow, so many people knew that. God damn, thanks. No, like, I'm serious. Like, you can ask... Hold up. I'm opening up another monster so I can continue to be focused in this VOD review because I have a tendency to get unfocused. We're taking about an hour per map, and it's one in the morning, so this will be exciting. Okay, so... There are some questions you can ask that I don't have experience in. I'm not. I'm from upstate New York. I am the only American player on the Academy team or the Owl team, though, which is crazy. Um, you can ask me questions that I can make an estimate on based on my experience playing the game. If something you ask of me is too far removed from the norm, it is not possible for me without experience to make an accurate mental picture of what you're saying so while i like the fact that you are putting the confidence in me to answer the questions that no one has experience with or very few people have experience with i did already move to la i'm back in new york for the holidays i fly back out on the sixth so while, while i appreciate the sentiment that I am someone who is strong enough in the game to answer that question i do not consider myself qualified to answer that hypothetical. So, we back? Did the stream die? What happened? Dude, there is a ton of Korean in comms. Audio fucking up? Oh, that is unlucky. I think I dropped a bit of frames for a sec, so I will restate my full opinion and take even more of everybody's time. <clears throat> um, a ton of Korean gets spoken in comms. Anytime Nice, Bernard, Chansek, and Alarm are talking to each other and they don't need to loot me and Snello in, they will talk in Korean. Totally fine. Um, 
Okay, so my, my overall opinion on the concept of hero bands is my overall opinion on I don't like estimating how radical changes will will affect my game that I play professionally. So I see no reason to speculate. I would much rather experiment and, and test and then have an informed opinion. And while I am very happy that people are willing to give me the benefit of the doubt that my <clears throat> speculation will be in somehow beneficial... I don't think it will be beneficial to anyone, nor do I think my opinion on hero bands matters. So I I don't feel comfortable answering that question. Uh, Fusion Uni does have a team house. Chef Heidi cooks for them too. She's amazing. I live in the owl house and eat wonderful owl food. Dude, that, that clip out of context is so bad. Why does everyone have to bring it up all the time? We're going to talk about Hanamura. What's our defense comp? It looks really weird. Wow. So we're playing three supports, right? We're playing one DPS. That's May. So what is our plan? We fuck it up here pretty bad, but I'll tell you the idea of the plan. Me and Alarm and Nice are going to kill every single DPS that tries to get through the choke every fight. If you think we can't do that, I can direct you to num a number of teams we have scrimmed where they get full held with me and Alarm having gold and silver damage. And that is not to say that the rest of our team is not hitting things. It's because they literally, if mean alarm play, ideally should never get through choke. So with that being said, we do fuck up. Let's watch how we fuck up. It seems exciting, right? With goats being so strong in the meta, we don't see those actions like the deep. I mean, we, we destroy goats because of the May. So the idea behind the comp is we beat goats because we have May, Ryan Zarya Brig. We beat the Pharaoh Mercy comp, or at least can can beat the Pharaoh Mercy comp because we have Zen Ana and Mean Alarm should be able to pressure them out of the sky. This has been nice. Has been on May and Pharaoh for the majority of this match so far, and it seems to be working out for him. Is Sugar Free going to be the one on the Pharaoh coming from Atlanta Academy? We're also going to be running that Hanzo, not just for the Sonic Arrow. So you can see, like, I'm not even focused on healing. I'm just trying to kill the Pharaoh Mercy. The more you poke them, the harder it is for them to get through choke. Oh, Riley, thank you for the gift to Zerbito. Pog champ. Saucy gonna be. Does the Hammond influence your decision making at all? So when they play Hammond, I sit on point as Ana, and I dare the Hammond to come shoot me. If the Hammond gets out of ball form, he is the easiest sleep target in the entire game. So his option is sit on point and do nothing, or try to shoot me and get slept. And both of those options suck for him. Trying to show. Monkey can at least pressure me, but it's kind of the same thing. Who's boss? Uh, Zerbito, you got gifted a sub. It's right here with that Hanzo knife. People don't have experience playing Fair Mercy in this meta. It's it's a so not only a hard comp to play, it's a hard comp to fundamentally understand and transition to. So positioned already on the high ground, looking to pepper in a little bit of early damage. So they get in top right, and we had to give up top right, and we didn't kill somebody. That's bad. Me and Alarm and Nice needed to kill someone. Not really any any individual person's fault. We needed to kill someone. I think I missed a shot on the Hanzo that would have killed the Hanzo, so that's where the fuck up happened, right? If I hit that shot, we kill the Hanzo. What makes the Fair Mercy comp, comp hard to understand? I mean, everybody in chat thought the Widow was important on Busan, right? Like that's that's fundamentally what makes it hard is to understand what about the comp is actually the threatening part and to make sure that you're putting your resources into that part. So for instance, if your Pharah is playing like way the fuck away from the fight, just spamming and the Mercy's like pocketing Hanzo, you shouldn't be focusing Pharah. And when playing it, you have to understand when to play spaced out enough and how to position to save the mercy. That's, I think, the biggest thing. Is the positioning to save the mercy is one of the most important aspects of the comp. And if you do that poorly, you're bad. Unlucky. What the fuck? Computer, stop dropping frames. Please. Um... You have to protect the Mercy that relies a lot on your positioning, coordination, and communication. And if you're bad at that, you're going to be bad at Fair Mercy, regardless of how good everyone is at aiming. 
Dynasty, likely expecting the goats, and so they would use the wall to cut off that main tank from the rest of the team. But now Nice gonna have to find another way to make himself useful. Yeah, Gator is on that wrecking ball as well, someone that we haven't seen much of. But here on Hanamura, there's a lot of environment to work on. We're gonna see some pagoda grinding from Atlanta Academy. <laughs> we give up that a lot of space. Sure. I sleep you the Pharah here. Gonna maintain some presence on it. The you can see the Pharah's asleep. That is for sure. Please appreciate this sleep. I think it's sick. Some Boom. It's on the point as Chong Sick has decided to take the doorway and it's going to push Atlanta Academy back. They're deciding exactly how they want to do this still. So, like, we should be favored right here. Alarm and me need to play like we're the best players in the game and just fucking wide flank and fight this Hanzo. Yeah, a we're a little scared. We can't be Atlanta playing Academy scared, but we are a little scared. It's, it's nice reasonable. As soon as we back up into this room, we lose, we fucked up. This is terrible. Yet the alt not the Cannot win. We have lost. <laughs> Just so everyone's aware. This is a lost position. As you would expect, and now <laughs> it's li hmm. literally unwinnable is maybe too strong of a term, but it is it is terrible. I sleep the diva here, but while I sleep the diva, Bernard's dying because I'm not healing him, so it's like, doesn't even matter. Does anyone actually do anything against your comp if we play correctly? Um. Hmm. I would argue Winston is better, but the goal of that tank is to just get through choke and get point. So... They both are fine. The argument for the Hammond is he will probably live longer. And it's probably more of a preference thing. I think the monkey's better, but that's I, I can't really justify that with facts. It's just my opinion. It's not really based in a factual setting. It's it's more how I feel. A huge one. Elk also has that. Like, we play both. I'm not sure in what situation Chancic likes either, but... I do know that they're both slightly different, and I leave that up to the main tank players. I am personally much more scared of a Winston than a Hammond, especially ult-wise. Oh, I don't know if this barrage is needed. We're already down two, but I can't really blame him. My guess is they're swapping, so it's like meh. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, Winston's bubble gets more value, but he's a lot easier to kill. On the back of some wings, hey, we talked about clipped wings. These are some... These are some good ones These here. Um, not to be a dick to Atlanta, our estimation of their ability to play sniper comps and non-goats was that they would be very unprepared. I felt like that was true after playing them. Doesn't mean individually they are bad, but I was not scared of any of them playing Widow or Hanzo. I'm sugar free wings. Yeah, the, the Pegasus type of wings, you know? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. just huge and muscular, you know. Made, made of pure aspartame. <laughs> that's just that's how he flies so light. Um no, I think monkey helps more with the mercy yeah, positioning. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so surprised but it, that only uh, ten years old. <laughs> the monkey and, and Hammond don't really matter uh, with the mercy positioning. It's much more the diva Farah and whatever the other DPS is. So they go goats, and we're playing not goats. Um, our comp is better because we A have May and B have Ana, so you know, there you go. I would say holding on to this May, you never quite know when you need a blizzard to clear that space and uh, elk sticking with So staying on the May is not at all for her ult, although that's a nice perk. The May is so A, if you're replacing Diva in Goats, you need a, a ult that combos with Zarya ult, because that's a really important part of that role in GOATS is your ult combos with Zarya ult, so you have an easy way to win fights. But May in particular is very good into Reinhardt, and Nice would swap Diva here if they weren't playing Goats, or if he felt like May was bad, and that'd also be totally reasonable. So the reason he likes May here is because he is old. I don't know if he thinks Diva's better if he didn't have ult. What's better against Archomp? I think Monkey would be. Why Ana over Lucio? Um, <clears throat> I am a smart player. You can watch me never get caught out in the entire time we are playing this comp. The only time Chancic dies is because of a miscommunication. Lucio is for repositioning in a defensive ult. My argument is we do not need it because we are good players. In essence. With this Ana as well. And so if you're going to have to jump down. 
exactly gonna use a space and uh, so we didn't really think they were gonna push here it's a little awkward and so fusion wall doesn't do much it's unlucky so they go point doesn't really seem to so that I get the brig low on rotate I, mean, they're gonna have to jump. I anti Zenyatta so I force his trance so like already I forced transcendence by playing Ana and we haven't needed speed yet that's huge now, make sure those they trance early and we just don't care we just pocket chance it mail's huge zones a ton of the point um, I feed here, so I do fuck up this one time, to be fair. And I die to the diva. Fuck up my sleep. I sleep into our matrix. I should have been able to drop to alarm. I didn't think alarm was going to drop. Miscommunication we had. Normally, alarm would always stay top with me. Because he has transcendence, he's playing point. Totally reasonable and good play on his part. I needed to identify that and play with him on, on ground. He trances. We have a support ult advantage here, and we just clean them up. And once again, like the defensive trading is so favored for the defense, it's crazy. Would it be true if we're playing as better players on Fusion Uni with Alarm? I will play this comp when we scrim NYXL. I will. I would have played this comp when we scrimmed London when they were making their playoff run. I would have played this comp when we scrimmed Fusion Owl. I like Anazen on this point. I think that me and Alarm on Anazen are one of the best duos on it in the game. And regardless of what team we play against, I would want it to be playing it. On a defensive point, these university are going to be in charge here. And to be clear, we have played the Anazen comp against the top Owl teams. And we have held them with it. So I am confident in the strength of it. I fucked up the execution in this particular fight. Of this defense, self destruct not going to get anything, but Chongsik is knocked down onto the low ground, so they're not going to have that Reinhardt for a little longer. But that doesn't seem to matter as the rest of Atlanta oh. Academy are going to stay on this high ground, though. They got the pick, Skater is back so. Can it's we hard. notice how big deck this play is by me? So they're not going to have that right for a little longer, but that doesn't seem to matter. I am on point right now. I want everyone to appreciate that. No one else could touch, and I didn't want to give him a tick, so I just jumped on point. As the rest of Atlanta and then they're like, oh shit, Elk, what are you doing in this corner? <laughs> and they all speed and try to kill me. And I get bubbled, which is awesome. I get briggied, which is awesome. I nade myself. Everybody saves me. But it's like, that's a play that you have to be able to do conceptually, regardless of the hero you're on. So. Yeah, that was crucial for alarm to pick up. It's not even like a big brain play. It's like just a, a fine play, but I wanted to point it out because I don't think people realize. They're like, that's a judgment call in the moment of, am I going to die? If I die, can we still win the fight? Is that risk worth trying to deny a tick? And I decided yes, and it paid off well. Mostly because Snilla saved my ass and Bernard saved my ass, but reattack even down a member so cutting away saucy cutting away that crucial zar playing ana was the most important things for your tanks to be aware of um was a mistake the team peeled off point ah uh, probably not like they were getting pretty booped we got pretty fucked up in that fight they used trance at the end which made it pretty awkward <clears throat> so my comms on ana i talk a lot when i'm playing ana probably more than i should so i'm talking every time i shoot somebody I'm talking every time I reload. I'm talking every time I don't have sleep or bionate up. I'm talking about where I am positioning, when I am rotating and cannot heal, and when I want my Rhine to play aggressive or passive. Alarm is not over 18. So that's a lot of things to conceptually think about, right? The important part of that is when you're playing Ana, if you want to say that many things, you can't be thinking about how to play Ana. You just have to be fucking playing Ana, right? So that's kind of the important thing. The primary things you should talk about is when you can heal, when you can't heal, when you need help, when you have nade, when you don't have nade. Those are the important things to talk about on Ana. Show comms. We do not have our Hanamura defense, I believe, in the VOD. It, for some reason, is not there. And that's annoying. But it goes straight from probably a hiccup in the recording, so it's okay. Alarm will be in season three of Owl, ideally. Assuming he doesn't somehow lose all of his skill.
Um, I don't think I'm giving up anything that's like groundbreaking. And if this is groundbreaking strats to the people in contenders, um, I don't know what to say to them. It shouldn't be. These are like basic things. It's also contenders. I want to focus on being informational. All of alarm settings are normal. He plays on a pretty low sense, though. So, like, a lot of the stuff that academy teams do that is different than other teams happens outside of the game, where you talk conceptually about what you're doing. Is it not correct, Mello? Well, I don't really think about it, so I don't know any alarm settings. So, like... Are the things I'm saying in this review basic as fuck? Yes. Would I be saying them to my own team? Dear God, no. Because they probably know 99.9% .9 of it. Alarm has Discord on Spacebar? What the fuck? That's crazy. Okay. Um. So, like, I'm, I'm not giving away anything that I think is important information. And I'm worried if this is important information because that means people are so out of it that I have no idea what's normal. Does that make sense? Like, that's crazy. Like, I'm pretty confident, even if I explained every single detail of what we're going to do to Atlanta before we played, we still would have won. Because I don't think they were flexible enough as a team to deal with the comps we played. Zarya DPS meant that Fusion University would finally be comfortable in their defense here. And now they will have that. I'm more just trying to explain it in a digestible way and from a player's point of view. And really trying to emphasize the fact that it's chaotic and flowing and you have to be able to adapt. And adapting is one of the most important parts. And nice does go diva here. Well, that's even better when you have ultimates. Uh, ATL though will have that rally and the earth shatter to see what they can make of it. They really seem to like these long brawly fights. So Saucy as well probably going to have a grab before everything's said and done. Yeah, and Atlanta Academy wants to get these quick picks to get that numbers presence on to the objective. Earth shatter's going to follow and counter that. Fights, so they enter top. We think they have grav and we no longer are playing May, so we don't want to hold high ground. Holding high ground was a thing we we do at the start of every fight. Um, but it's a little risky here because we think they have grav. Saucy as well. Probably going to have a grab before everything's said and done. Yeah, and Atlanta Academy wants to get... Note, me and Alarm are playing opposite corners, so it's hard to speed in the zone. Both of us, I'm trying to always keep LOS on chancing. Quick picks to get that it's a good grab. It's a good not everyone getting shattered, only nice gets shattered. Gonna follow and counter that surge. Nice is gonna we follow up well. Um... My goal is just to keep alive the people who are diving. Green, though, going to be the first victim of this fight. Fusion University have that 6v5 that they want here on a defense. The rest of Atlanta. Is it risky because we don't have trance? Um, no. We only have one support ult. So the way we lose our defense is we will lose to a combo. Um, the reason that they switched roles this map is because Bernard had Graf and Nice didn't want to make Bernard swap. Totally reasonable, but but Nice knew they had Graf, so he wanted to go Diva. Super heads up play. That's that's a heads up play by Nice. That that is very forward thinking. He goes, they have Graf. I do nothing on May against the Graf. I can go Diva and pressure the Zarius. We have more time in the fight. How often can you rotate? Um, you can always rotate by yourself. I can't explain when because it's so situational and you just have to get used to recognizing it. Fusion University looking very strong there. That early pick onto Sugar Free. We've seen it so many times before. We wanted to split up for the grab a bit. We wanted to at least make sure that if we get grabbed, it's not like five people. It's like two people and one of them is our Zen and the other one we bubble. That's the ideal situation. They take top again. They do a good job clearing us off. He's got that nano boost as well. Fusion University have an ultimate advantage. I fuck up here. And Chancic fucks up here. We do a bad rotation. That means I can't heal while he's getting pressured, which means I have to nano him reactively. Granted, they commit beat here. But ideally, I don't nano him there. I just use nade. But because I was rotating as he got pressured, I had to. Looks like the nano boost is going to come off as well. Chancic is hammering. And like, they just used two support ults, and we have used nano. 
and their Diva is anteed, and their Reinhardt is anteed. So they're like still behind in this fight. That's insane. Transic's doing a great job like playing passive and just baiting people to pressure him. Another insane play by Chensik. They go for a combo and he shatters the team and the Diva Bomb. So they can't even combo us. So the only thing they can possibly do to beat our comp, Chancic just single-handedly stopped. Insane. Probably didn't need to combo, but it's not awful. Excuse me. Even though you would say Atlanta looking so good right Were they here, rushing with the grab? Yeah, they kind of had to. But this is <clears throat> point B, folks. We already ran them out of both support ults. They didn't really have any sustain, any way to sustain the fight, and we had the Ana. So we, we, we were advantaged in the long fight. We cannot forget that here on the offense, one of your kills, you need to get like three or four of them to be worth one of the defensive kills. The advantage is so incredibly strong for Fusion University, so just evening things out is not enough for ATL. And they're, they're gonna going clear to us off high ground no again. Here. Fusion University, the same <coughs> so this rotation. Even fight. So yeah, people no like this rotation, okay? I do drop down from high ground earlier, yes. Um, but not super early. I don't know how to explain it. Like, I just use my own judgment and I don't really think about it. With the combo failing, should they maybe just reset right there? Ah, I think it's okay for them to fight it out. I don't know. This point's really hard to cap playing goats. So they, they do this rotation. I rotate. Undefeated on assault. So, you know, they got to be feeling pretty good about their chance. Wait, who? Remember are university. The same could be said for them. So it's a fairly even fight. Yeah, Atlanta Academy. Atlanta were undefeated on assault. It's because they always fucking go to Hanamura and they play that Bastion shit. Undefeated on assault. So, you know, they got to be feeling pretty good about their chances. But now with two and a half minutes, though, it's now starting to time to like, hey, we got to. So this is a good position for our fight to happen. I can heal Chancic easily. He has space to peel back. We have a lot of people surrounding him, and Alarm and I cannot get pressured by a rotation without them going through our tanks. Why doesn't my team brawl for a second high ground and force out their cooldowns early? Because the risk of us getting ulted is too high. If we get shattered up there, we just lose. We get shattered on point, not all of us get shattered. This is the miscommunication. Okay, ready? He doesn't realize he got bubbled, I don't think. Or we didn't realize he got bubbled. Because he pushes up to swing like he has bubble and immediately dies. So my guess is he didn't realize he got bubbled and he dies here. And we recover from this, but it, it's bad that this happens. Because not only does he die for it, but Snillo also dies for it. When I'm about to have Nano up. Now that we've lost people, all of our focus is on stabilizing on point. So that means we're not dying and we're trying to not give them cap. Nice gets a huge pick on Dogman while he is trance up. I don't know how Dogman died there, but that's huge. Um, I nano nice to keep him up and then we get shattered. Gator kind of threw this one. Okay, he has a choice between pinning the Zenyatta and the Ana. And I want you to pay attention to the impact I have in this fight. I get up, Diva's on me. I sleep the Diva, I am at whatever one bar of 25 HP. I'm pocketing Bernard as he goes for this grab play. Look, I'm still at 20 HP next to Azaria. I'm now at 2 HP. I get Briggy and I name myself. So not only did I keep my Zarya and D.Va alive as we're fighting them in the graph, I live at literally 2 HP and then kill their Ryan as he comes back to pressure me. Like, I'm not, like, if, if Alarm doesn't die, to be fair, he gets Trance up. And that's, like, equally as bad, but the D.Va can probably kill Alarm. The D.Va, though, got outplayed, Hawk. If you're still in chat, I outplayed you, I'm sorry. Hit the sleep, stayed alive, saved the team Easy clap. 
I don't think it's the right play because the Diva should be able to zone the Zen. The Diva can't guaranteed zone the Ana. And maybe it's even fair to say, but like, I don't know. If I got pinned, we'd probably lose that fight because I don't think Bernard lives. Anniversary, do you get another defense? Yeah, that, oh man, again, things looking so good for Atlanta Academy. I thought surely Gator was going to charge off the edge of the map, but no. Okay, that's fair. If you think the Zenyatta has trance, it's probably always better to pin him. That's That's a good point. So in the fight, if you think Alarm has trance, it's 100% right to pin him. It's just unfortunate that I popped off. He actually manages to find not only a pillar, but he gets the pin kill. However, that meant that ATO was fighting. And they still have no ticks. With those good defensive resources. They have combo again, though. And combo is fucking scary. Mm -hmm. We need Chancic to pop off and save our lives again. Not come back from. So Gator, even though he charged back onto the playing field. So they have combo. We're scared about dying when we're clumped up. Very good back up. My friend, as we're going to see the rally from Sugar Free start things off. That means they're going to try to make some things happen. But the rally on the other side, University, everyone's going to have even footing right now. Damage mitigation going both ways. Saucy has that graviton surge. Bernard Notice how passive Chancic is playing. This is really good. So we tranced to say Bernard. In my personal opinion, this was the wrong play. I understand the reasoning alarm went for this, but it's important to understand what goats. If one person is standing still in a grav, you really cannot save them. Because Discord plus everybody shooting at their head is just an unreasonable amount of damage. That particle barrier, but that's not going to be enough. The self destruct coming from the sky. Not going to get anything, but Sugar Free going to get the first kill here from Bernard. 65 for Atlanta Academy. Sound barrier now from Atlanta Academy. They're going to invest everything. Diva is fat, and I accidentally nano the Diva over the Rhine. If I nano Rhine, we win this fight. So I made two mistakes on the defense so far that were very apparent to me. The first one on first point, no, the first one on second point where I died of the D.Va, and this is the second one where I miss Nano. Granted, it's not entirely in my control because there's a D.Va in front of me, but regardless, it's bad. And more or less my fault, it's my ult. Into this, with a minute left, this might be their only opportunity to get the Nanoing the D.Va isn't awful, but I should have been able to save the run. This point, Gator Nice has never played D.Va in a scrim before, no. <laughs> Generally, the only two things that end up getting swapped are Brig and Zarya. Even though you have all if they force Trance out after killing you, they lost their own Trance before. In the next fight, they get to use Trance for you. Really sure you're always the right target. Ah! Uh, no, I think they can maybe play to win that fight. I'm not, I'm not positive. I think it's close. Regardless, it probably ends badly for them. Close to that Earth Shatter as well. That might be what they need to seal things up. Fusion University, though, are maintaining their presence on this point right now. We got some sleeping members, but it doesn't seem to convert into any kills. Ajax very low. Nice. So at this point, we don't actually think we can win the fight. We're just trying to stall. Very low. Is the DMAC going to happen? Yes, it will. Just now getting that first tick. ATO, though. Oh, oh. the big shatter from Gator. Yeah, that big shatter where he killed, he shattered one brig. Wow. From the defense now. This Impressive. Has the grab has I am impressed. He's going to have to try and confirm these kills without the help of Alarm right here. And while he still lives, he won't <clears> do so for much longer. They came second point with like seven minutes. I am totally happy with holding them until under a minute. I try to make that extra clear to my team in comms. That defense, despite a couple mistakes, was amazing considering how it started. That is like very close to best case scenario or reasonable best case scenario. Um, well, you can't have a two way between an owl team and a different academy team. That's not really how two ways work. So. If Zach had a two-way with Fuel, he could play on Envy, but he doesn't. A key turning that would be kind of funny, though, if that's how two-ways work. You get, like, double pay. That'd be, that'd be cool. And uh, you can see why they're so comfortable here on Assault. But teams this good, split seconds might be all that they give in terms of opportunity. And mm -hmm. you got to identify that very, very quickly. It's like those people who understand how quick just a single... Uh, okay. <clears throat> I want you guys all to realize, especially any Atlanta players watching... I still am not sure how I want to attack this comp that you're playing. I think it's a really good comp. I have no idea how to attack it, fundamentally. It just seems very strong and well-rounded. So, I have two plans, okay? So, my first plan is, um, well, you're not playing May, and I think you need to be on May. But because you're playing Widow, I actually, I talk about this as we're in spawn. 
If they're not playing May, we can go point with goats. We can pick Ryan goats with a Moira or an Ana. I think Ana's better, but it's debatable. Because you just need healing and your, your Zen's not going to matter. You go through choke right side, you rotate high ground, you play a super slow fight, you get point, and you kind of just like fuck around and run around in circles until eventually you catch them. And it's not great. That plan isn't great. That plan's like kind of bad. That plan probably wins 35 to 40% of the time. But I really don't know what's good into this. And I'd argue almost nothing is good into this. That's why Atlanta are 4-0 and on 2CP. This comp that they've come up with is really good. And no other team plays it, so we get zero practice against it. With Gator on the Genji Somber Dive is okay, but it's not great because Mercyon is a really strong support duo into that. University, you know, probably, definitely, having watched the VODs, expecting something like this, coming out with that shield break. Nice Farah and Snillo on that Hanzo going to be trying to set up something of a crossfire so that that monodirectional Orisa shield not going to be quite enough cover. Yeah, nice and Elk. Once ults come up, you win. Um, not true. You can get headshot. Um, if you don't EMP both supports, they can Valk. You can possibly kill somebody and they can get a res off. They can anti you as you're trying to get in. Like, assuming you get ults up and you successfully execute ults, sure you win, but building them is not easy. And executing them is even harder. Gonna be pretty vulnerable. When losing a fight on second, on 2CP second point, when you know the fight is still winnable, knowing that everyone's gonna come in staggered. <clears throat> um... Be a confident person and make a call. And if someone else counter calls you, trust them. If I say not winnable and someone else says winnable, I trust them. There's no more discussion on it. Because not only are they making a call, but they're confident enough to tell me I'm wrong by saying that. In the same way how if someone else says winnable and I go not winnable, I'm confident enough in my call to counter what the other person's saying and say, I think you are wrong and people will respect that. So... You need confident, experienced players making those decisions. ...in the sky to the Widowmaker, and, you know, that might be why we're seeing some changes here, is we're going to be seeing alarm on Moira. Yeah, very interesting. You so, could get I don't even know if this is the best play, by the way. That's what I'm saying. We have no practice against this. This is an on-the-second plan I made. ...powers by get that coalescence through, and that will help damage that Bastion. It's also really good for, you know, some solo target healing if your Reinhardt is miles away but desperately needs some burst healing right now. So, Fusion University making their way across that catwalk and ATL, how are they going to respond to this? It's all about that rotation. making use And, like, we've never done this, so, like, we're trying to do these coordinated rotations on the fly, which is not easy. Actually, DM, Defense Matrix, that grenade, so Dogma not going to get that ultimate. And then we're like, okay, well, let's flank them. And I, I think what we should have done is like right here, we should have faked and we should have sped back point and tried to catch them in main. But we like fully rotated and then they rotated. So it's like not great. Right. And now like they're set up and we're still in a bad position. And like it's hard to push through this choke, so maybe we go point, and we speed around, and we try to pressure the bastion. But it's it's like just awkward. Like this comp is just awkward to play against. Their widow, by the way, is out in our main, and we sent our diva to go chase him, which means we can't really even all in the bastion because we don't have diva. But it is good because the diva will kill the widow. Yeah, it's a game of chicken. Uh, the widow didn't need to get split. I think the widow fucked up by letting herself get split. Here, ATL already. Oh yes, no. Okay, you agree. Yeah, kind of lucky. I agree. I think the widow could 100% stayed with her team. Um, but I think we should like go point with speed and then go around this side and try to kill the bastion maybe, or maybe we try to force the Orisa shift and then go for a pin play. Like it's just awkward. Like it's just hard. I like I, this comp is just hard to play against. Have that advantage in being the defenders and not having to swap comps. So like we go for the pin bubble play and <laughs> Orisa just shifts and we do nothing. <laughs> like that's awful. A cooldown usage on our part. I made the call for the play. I just didn't think at the end of the moment, like, oh shit, they're gonna Orisa shift and we can't push. It's like, Bernard is still doing a great job zoning the Widow. Like, none of us are worrying about the Widow because Bernard Caldy has it covered. At one time, and it starts, you gotta go. Sugar Free still pretty good on that health and the Mercy keeping him up there, but no... I'm like, we're all just trying to fucking hide from the Bastion and, like, hoping they fuck up. Because we're pretty confident we're not winning, so we're still just hoping they fuck up. Kills from Fusion University themselves, the Coalesce is gonna be the first ultimate... 
How big of an impact does staff of FU have to play a major role in Philly's success? Fusion staff have changed every season. All of the staff we have had have been great. The current staff we have are great. They have changed every season. Mostly because they get signed to Owl as head coaches, so it's not like they get demoted. <laughs> I think they might Nano Bastion there. Bernard kills Saucy. That's huge. Chensik dies. I die here because I feed. Unlucky. And then they're just chilling, dude. Like, our comms here, no one's, no one's like, really talking. We're just, like, chilling. We're just, like, yeah, we're all staying alive. Well, except for I died. I fed. But everybody else is just staying alive. Look, Diva Bomb, look at this synergy without words. It's more of the players and the staff. Well, all the players have changed. Except for me and Alarm. Um, so all the players fusion has have, have also been great, but I mean, like the team is very different now than it was in season one. And it's very different now than it was in season two. And season two is very different than season one. Huge grab play heads up play. This is Spock. The grab time surge coming from Fusion University might be evening these things up. Sugar free going down means a lot of the damage from Atlanta Academy is no longer there. And Fusion University, you said it, Ham. They like the long... Hold up. I want to back up. The decision to graph. Time dealing with this as Hotsmith throughout that self destruct. Really good graph. Diva's re mecking. Nice. Realizes Diva doesn't have mech. Risk free, easy win fight with the graph. This is a good graph. Really good graph. I think season two, Fusion Uni was the most dominant because it was the most of the five of us had been playing together for eight months. And uh, we were so clean. No leak. We were so clean that we were taking maps off London consistently in the Owl playoffs. So, like, we'd scrim them, and we would, like, do good. And it doesn't mean we were, like, owning them. Like, we would still lose a fair amount of time, which is reasonable. But, like, it was really confidence-boosting to be, like, we're playing against the best Owl teams, and we are taking maps off them consistently. Like, that's an awesome feeling and confidence boost as a player. Um, how did we decide to chill out on point instead of resetting when we lost players? I don't know. I was dead. I wasn't talking. They just didn't die. It's great. Um, instinct. <laughs> Play, playing a lot. What should Atlanta have done to push their advantage? Dude, I have no idea. I don't understand this comp. Like, I want to make that clear. I've never played it. I don't really understand the goal of it. I don't really understand what to do against it. I am the least informed about it. So... I'm uncomfortable making any decision on it. If that makes sense. Like, like I, I wish I had some more insight on it because then I'd feel more confident playing against it, but I don't. This is the most scary comp to me in the game because I have no fucking idea. How does Fusion Uni stay so good? The, the team atmosphere is just positive. Like, it's just positive, and we're also good at picking up new players and scouting. All the it's not like we we end up signing bad players. Like everybody on Fusion Uni has always been very very good. It's just like I th I'm just I'm proud of the fact personally that me and Alarm have played with three separate rosters and performed very well in all three settings. That's not to take anything away from anyone else. I'm just personally proud of that. I mean, no, when like there's probably a good way to beat this comp. I haven't thought about it, is my point. I have not formed an opinion that I'm confident to beat this comp with, and that's important for me to fundamentally want to IGL against a comp. Like I'm not comfortable calling against this comp. Is Car Car Korean? I don't know. Probably find that on Liquipedia though. Would I like to play with Alarm and an Owl team in the future? Yes, I think Alarm is my favorite player I have ever played with. Either way, we kill them here. And, okay, I know that maybe this wasn't intentional of Nice, but I hope it was. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and say this was. He grabbed them off point. So please look at the percentage meter. So they play the Sim Bastion defense. And we can just run and not give them time to set up. 
So I'm making the call here like we are running main. And I make the call specifically, we are running left side main and killing the Bastion. Because they're not going to have time to set up. Especially with goats, you want to brawl the strong. The longer you fight, the stronger you get. And now if you. They get two people top. Kill the Bastion. Kill the Ana. Instantly win. They needed to recognize they didn't have time to set up and not try for it. But because they did, like, our punish there was so clean. Nick able to take him out right away. And Fusion University looking well set to take this in record time. Oh, I, again, Moxie doesn't turn into results. I like that they go for it, but a team like Fusion University aren't going to be as susceptible. We talked about it in pregame to these kinds of decisions. Earthshatter not going to I don't know how much, how influential nice Karkar was in their right. roster, so I can't really University say. Fusion do have more time on the clock. They can lock things up by giving Atlanta Academy their first loss on Assault. Oh, look at this decision-making from Nice. It's incredible. Rotate around the left side. Tank is Nastrian. They can get salt on. I did not know that's what Bernard's name was backwards. Um, I could play the comms. I don't know what we say, so I'm slightly concerned about it. This is Numbani. This is Hanamura. Remember the audio is slightly delayed, so the video is ahead of the audio by bitch. We have to run. Go, 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 I boop Hammond, don't focus Hammond. I'm gonna boop Hammond now, only Hammond now. Cap. Tracer, Tracer, Tracer. Okay, I'm booping Hammond again. So, like, an important note, by the way, about Hammond is I'm pretty sure I can keep him booped in this pit forever. Like, is Hammond? He can't really get up here quickly. I can keep him booped in the pit forever. So I made the call not to focus him. That way everybody focused on point. I just focused on pooping him and it worked out really well. What's the difference in swearing? Uh, I don't know. I don't think people swear that much. Chancic swears a lot. Chancic, Chancic swears a lot, <laughs> to be honest. But... Yeah. It's not bad. He's not like cursing at people. He's just like, oh, fuck, I died. <laughs> okay, so we did not notice this at the time, but if we full hold them here, we win the series. There's a super funny clip where we realize we won after we hit full held. Where we're like, wait. I'm like, wait, guys, we won. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, nice. Um, so we're playing our same comp. We swap to a D.Va because we want to be better against the Pharah thing. Um, I like this call from Bernard. Bernard talked about it with Chancic a bit. It means Chancic has to play safer, but we have like more air pressure. Um, they choose to go goats. This is terrible. Don't play this comp into our comp. We'll murder you. Hanamura. Here as they head out with that goats comp, nice back on the May. Really like this elk actually working that honor really well. Even though you do lose the sound bearer, this player himself. So like we wall, we don't wall everybody. I think we actually wall no one. It almost doesn't matter. Just does so much with the entire point of our comp is just to bait them to pressure Chancic as hard as they can because we can heal through all of it. And Dogman's gonna die here because they're looking at Chancic. Like he can't live with the May Diva flank pressuring him that is well worth the sacrifice. <clears throat> yeah, the like he's just not gonna stay alive on the attacking team. we should have been able to kill him there i needed to hit a shot alarm needed to hit a shot or bernard needed to focus him not an individual error a team error we should have been able to kill zen there why did saucy bubble
Um... Well, even though you do lose the sound bearer, this player himself just does so He self-bubbled because he's... I don't know. Those were bad bubbles. Kit, that is well worth the sacrifice. Yeah, the Maywall unable to isolate anybody on the attacking team actually just keeps them all in inside your video with me. Atlanta Academy, <laughs> do you deal with that? Notice we still have this like massive crossfire set up with like the May from this side and the most of our team over here and like all this that, and, uh, juicy well, damage and splitting and then Alarm is amazing and kills Dogman, which is huge. Dogman was actually fighting nice to nice slowed him for Alarm to hit the right click. Unintentional synergy, but important to point out. After the first push, why don't they speed on to May? Um, this player himself so he just amp speed. Does so much they use the bubble and get zero value. Well and their Zen is almost dead, so their Lucio has to back up. Yeah, the so they're split here because the pressure nice put on Dogman. And they didn't get very much value out of their cooldowns. One, because we peeled well, but two, because they weren't amazing uses. Unable to isolate anybody. So they have to come back to kill Neist, but May is not easy to kill. Only person who's contesting right now is Hawk. Hawk cannot 1v1 Neist right now. Neist will win that, so Hawk has to give up. And now Neist is still top, like pressuring them, and uh, Dogman goes to flank him. Pretty sure you'll see. That's a shot from Dogman. Nice slows him and then Alarm right clicks him cross map because he's slowed. I'm also shooting him as you can see from this on a line. You mean instead of going to point? Um, Because they don't have kill pressure because we're playing so far back. Look at how far back we are. This is too far of a distance to push and speed is not up yet. Just does so much with her kit that One, is well worth the sacrifice. Two, yeah, the Maywall unable to three, four, on the attacking team. Five, keeps them all six, seven, eight, <laughs> nine, ten. Speed is up about now. The May is split. Oh, they can't kill the May. The May will press shift or wall herself into the air, and their comp has zero vertical pressure. They cannot kill the May physically. That's why Goats is bad into this comp. <laughs> like, he can just wall himself onto the roof. Instantly unkillable. He can press shift and jump down main. Instantly unkillable. And then after we pick Dogman, they try to kite out, which is, I think, the wrong call. Like, they can't ever get out of here for free. It's a huge wall by Nice. We get so much value from that. They can't even recontest. Rate these announcers' knowledge. I don't listen to them. I don't know. I, I am not a caster. I find casting very difficult. I don't want to judge them. Nice hold. Pog champ hold. Didn't even use any ults. Played a superior comp. Made a small adjustment in our comp, assuming they played the Pharah thing by playing D.Va. Even though they didn't, the D.Va still worked out very well in terms of the high ground control we had. We played that well. Even with all of those missed walls, nobody saw that. Um, but they were for disruption. Exactly, yeah. disrupting. You forced um, I made the call here. While we're sitting in spawn, that they played Widow last time with their um, Bastion comp. And we played goats into it. So I thought they're going to go May to try to counter pick us. I didn't realize they had Brig here, personally, um, over the Mercy. But I thought they were going to go May. So my immediate thought is let's go a Pharah comp. Pharah should be strong here. Once we see the Brig, we're like, well, is, is Pharah the comp here? And then we go stand and spawn for a while trying to figure out what we're supposed to play. Scouting Farah with with the mercy, you know, just to, just to make sure the scouting happens. It's all about the debate. And then we're all sitting in spawn like Chancex, like we go goats and alarm goes Anna, and I'm like, why why are we on Anna? Like, what what are we playing? Am I staying mercy? But ATL, they they know that the jig is up. So much time. And I go Lucio, and I'm still like, we can't go goats. They have May. Goats is bad. We're all very confused. Then we're like, well, can we go dive? 
We're like, sure, fuck, let's go dive. And I'll go Ana, and we pressure point. What a clusterfuck of planning. Not planned at all. Never played this comp. Never scrimmed this comp. Have no idea what we're doing. Um, Yeah. No, it's great. Not stressful at all when you're in-game. Trensic almost instantly dies. If they have mercy, he does. Genji, you know, at this level, definitely one of the best people to take out that dash and get that ult charge off of them. No, I mean, we played it. There's a reason we played it. It's because it's good here. But it's only good because they're not on Mercy and they're not on Widow. Well, static character is a really great way for that Dragon Blade to come out on a top. Or it's only it's better. It's still right probably now. fine. And our, our plan here is when D.Va goes point, we hack D.Va, focus D.Va, we have a crossfire with our Genji Sombra and our Ana Zen so that D.Va has no chance of living. And then we just focus point and we cap. Like, they don't have an option to stay point, we just kill them and we cap. What's up, puppies? ATL goes out not with a bang, but with a wither. Hmm, feels bad, could not rotate run a certain comp and when you're not running that you have to do something else to make sure that it happens yeah and when you're five weeks in you lose that surprise aspect as well exactly and ATL now going to be drawing upon their banks to see what they'll come up with here on route 66 you never know we've seen Hanzo's before so when I say it, main Hanzo's. tanks can carry that doesn't mean it's a main tank meta in the sense that everybody thinks it is like Main tanks are enabled and supported entirely by their team. No matter how good the main tank is, the team has to support them in their aggression and when they want to play passive or else you'll lose horribly. In comp, it's a bit different, but especially in like the team-based Overwatch game that is played in Contenders and Owl and not really anywhere else, um, your main tank is like the, the person who is setting the tempo for the fight. They're generally the one calling to push, generally the one calling to back up because they're like the front guy. Um, but they have a lot less control in this than they do in solo queue. DPS, yeah, literally, saw earlier. Can Lucio carry? Eh, eh. Most of the time you carry by talking. In goats v goats. Talking and thinking. Some aiming. Okay, so. Some so ult usage, Mo a lot of ult usage. Is but. somewhere where we can see that played. I believe it was the uh, the Guangzhou uh, Soul matchup where we saw both teams actually the Dynasty and the Charge pulling out quad DPS on Route 66. Um, I'm sorry. You think quad DPS is memeing? Quad DPS uh, is clean. For them, it looks like they're going to be keeping nice on this Sombra uh, for a little bit of early scouting. We are not playing the new patch. Locator, just in case, you never know. Sometimes uh, I always forget. So. <laughs> Uh, ATL go okay, I am tired. It's 2 in the morning. I'm only going to talk about our attack. <clears throat> Mostly because that just seems more interesting. And I'm tired. ATL going to be sticking... They're on the attack. They will... So obviously they're going to close hold us because... I'm sitting here in spawn and I watch them all cross to the train. So I know they're going to close hold us. Fun fact, go to the spawn with a sniper and just scope in, check, no reason not to check, need to check. Could change up their Once you know, you just right don't feed so and you win. Try I go for a preset nade, they're not holding close enough, but we also sonic it just to see who's in it, to be 100% sure. So for instance, here we see they're on monkey, we know they're not playing Sombra. Um, this comp is the best comp in the game, literally unbeatable, Fancy. I peeked on Widow in our second there. attack. Ajax is going to go so Ajax dies, Dogman dies, Bernard, Pog Champ Farah. Chancic dies, Alarm dies, but like who cares? We're attacking. Bernard lives at 3 HP. How unbeatable? Well, they have to swap off goats. And the cool thing about this meta is as soon as they swap off goats and you swap goats, you immediately win. So getting them to swap off goats is great because not only does it ruin their ult economy, it also gives you a free fight. Why do I play Ana instead of Mercy? I hate playing Mercy, first of all. Second of all, I hate playing Mercy. Third of all, I really don't enjoy playing Mercy.
go buffed up again back so and healthy as um i picked anna one time in scrims and it felt the same so i kept picking anna also it felt better versus widow because teams would swap widow and tracer and i felt defenseless and like i was going to get murdered of pressure long distance mid long distance but he can also plop down that bio i think it's objectively better into dive and objectively better into widow and it's only on his only worse than mercy into goats but the first fight is already favored enough you don't need the mercy nano is also a much better ult than val um for nano visor that old ass ult combo also gives you a lot more burst healing that's debatable do I actually make decisions what I like or dislike? Um, no, I make decisions based on what I think wins. And what I know wins here is the Ana comp. The Mercy comp should also work fine. Um, Anti-Nate is super good in the first fight. Like, you just play them differently. You just look for different things. If we're winning, why does it matter? Is the correct answer. Doesn't matter what's better. I what, mean, ma what matters is we're winning. Is certainly running distraction because right now Fusion University that was cool. literally and figuratively circling the Bernard gets so focused here, dude. Holy fuck. Focus down any single target, Look at his so HP. Chongsik of all people finds Dogman. Oh, good EMP. I believe that catches the Tracer as well. Saucy was able to get out of there, but not for long. Nice playing some good Sombra throughout all of Route 66. Bernard taking very, very low. They're unable to get the last 20 HP. I don't think he was expecting the EMP. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Like, ults in this comp... Ults in this comp don't matter. Like, this comp is such a meme that its point is to make the fight as chaotic as possible and let individuals shine with their individual playmaking ability. And that is it. There is not a real strategy. There is not a real play style. You are playing quick play and trying to win 1v1s. <laughs> and it's really good in the goats. I love this Bernard flexing onto the Farah. Did you see what he did there? Hawk flew at him. Diva Jaws open wide to swallow up any of those rockets. He concussions mines away and then. I enjoy playing quick play like this. I don't know about you guys, but it's pretty fun. On top of his head, gets the DMAC, gets the kill. Really good play. It's like watching Mufasa fall. That's unlucky. Right when the Divas run, when the run out of you know booster, right? And so Fusion University gonna have to go with. So like, as soon as we lose one person, we just can't really win. I kind of need, like, the pressure of everybody, so we just reset. I swap, by the way. Like, I have nano, but it's not even worth staying because it's not good to retake with. Can I explain what makes it good into goats? Okay, who is goats diving here? Because I'm going to play far enough away where they can never pressure me. Alarm can climb up walls. Chansik is Arissa. Arissa's hard to kill. Bernard is flying. Snillow can run. And Nice is invisible. So. They don't kill anybody. Ever. And if they are, it's because they're dying. So, like, it's very hard for goats to kill anything. Because they don't have ranged damage. They don't have poke damage. And if they try to do that, they lose to your ults and your damage. So, it's like. It's unintuitive, but it's so... Goats requires you to be organized, and you cannot be organized against this. You need... Like, dive is a fine spot. Because you're playing an individual game. Orissa, though? Yeah, you can keep Orissa up with her shift, as long as she doesn't get discorded. Either way, if she dies, like, they're overcommitting on cart, and your Farah and team just, like, would destroy them. They're not even playing goats there. Well, yeah, that fight, though, we had a lot of ults. Like, they're not winning that fight regardless. We just have a ton of ults. And then we swap immediately after getting held to goats because their comp sucks yeah, into goats. Final blow. Saucy on this tracer doing some work. Mm-hmm. And poor Chongsik now feeling what it's like to be a baby. It's a good stagger by them on Chongsik. ATL. Swapping to that tracer. Why the Sombra? Um, we needed more DPS who couldn't get shot by goats. Likely going to be swapping onto the goats. Look, yes, indeed, Chongsik back on that Reinhardt. But given all of this, ATL will have a massive alt advantage. Fusion University know they have to be walking into a very tough fight. Um, Arissa's better because Arissa can stay point for longer. We have played both. Um, Chansik thinks Arissa's better. <clears throat> I agree with him. Ball is definitely playable. 
But uh, why Somber over Widow? I don't know, man. Go for Widow. I, like, there's not a lot of thought in that comp. It's not like some, like, mega strategy with, like, crazy crossfires. It's just like, you're just, you're just playing quick play and having fun. Shooting people. Junk rusher and eco push. The skater's gonna get shield bash and forced to use that primal rage. So that's one ultimate down for Atlanta Academy. When it's a mirror match, don't you have a free fight when... Yeah, that's kind of the point, right? Is we play and we make them swap. Mind you, this is the cool thing about the comp. It's impossible to retake with. So you can never really retake a fight playing such a shitty comp. You can only snowball. So you can't swap. And the things that counter it lose to goats. So as soon as your snowball gets stopped, you immediately swap goats in her favorite again to continue snowballing. Like, it's crazy. Hawk hasn't been finding the value in those self destructs since the first map. Fusion University doesn't have anything on their side, so this attack for them is good enough. This, okay. It's a little hard to get out of the mindset of playing the comp, to be honest. So, like, right here, we're split as fuck and not really sure what we're doing. We're all over the place. It takes us a sec to get, like, back in the mental state. Yeah, they're getting closer right here, and indeed, Alarm's actually going to invest that transcendence. Chongzik, you see Is there a name for it? Um, forward, no. <laughs> being brought very low means With a 40 PS to work against Owl Widows? Um, I, I don't know. I haven't played that comp against an Owl team. Fusion University going to have to back up for just a little bit, but ATL as well, seeding some space. Well, they were very aggressive in Fusion University. Widow is good into it, but you probably still win the snowball, the first snowball fight to cap first point because you have such an ult advantage. It's only like the second point you run into trouble because you run out of ults and they actually get room to retake. A little bit longer. Is there enough time to come back onto this payload? I mean, you're very, very close to that sound barrier and transcendence. You may well just give it a go. Why not? You know, you have no time on. No, you can't retake because the comp doesn't work as a comp. Like it's not. It doesn't do anything. Like, it's, it's, it's so bad that very simple things counter it. It's just really good into everything that's not DPS heroes. So you make them go DPS heroes, and then you go the comp that owns DPS heroes goats. The reason you can't mirror match it is because it's bad into DPS heroes. And positioning an ult economy gives you such an advantage if they choose to, to try to mirror you that they can never retake the point. Because... The comp sucks into DPS heroes, and you always have the better positioning. How did we punish Gator so hard? Um, we yelled monkey, 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 or Rhine, 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 anytime he went in anywhere. And then we tried to kill him. And we hoped for the best. And um, nothing special. I don't think he was feeding more than any other main tank would have in the situation. God, how does Chonsik not die here, man? He overextends. This is an over. Like this, this pin is crazy. He thinks he's stopping on cart and he keeps fucking going. Oh, the bubble's huge. The Briggy is huge. He barely lives. I beat to save him. It's a good shatter and a good grab. From the Zarya player on Atlanta, Transcendence is going to keep Sugar Free alive. Sugar Free should not be here right now for this world. But Hawk's going to get that. Uh, alarm. Onto oh, Alarm trolled. Um, I made fun of him for this. He died with Trance to a Diva Bomb. Alarm, even things up he knows it's his down. bad. We do win this fight if he presses Q. It's unlucky. Atlanta Academy taking advantage of that numbers advantage, and as you see Hawk getting into the back line, getting very aggressive, knocking Stillo down. Stillo is going to go down eventually. Atlanta Academy. Has it's okay. That's like the first mistake I can point out of Alarm in four maps. So like, you know, like there, like there's not much. <laughs> ATL, that was a clutch, clutch trance from Dogman, buffing all of his team. Fusion University, anytime only Snillo can kill the Snillo by jumping off the map. You're, all the shatters are probably gonna just be for free. You saw. And so, like, they still use both support ults. They swapped Ryan, and they used Diva Bomb, and we still have four ult, or three ults coming back. So, like, we're still pretty favored. Massive one, but a free shatter does not mean free kills. As Dogman showed Fusion University right there, really heads up good play from that. Also, we're playing East Coast for all the games, so, like, Alarm's a bit laggy. He's in LA, but it's, like, a little laggy. 
Zenyatta, and then the rest of ATL able to focus down Fusion University and hold once again with just a minute 20 left for Fusion. He can blame Ping and that's fine. They let us rotate point for free, which is kind of fun. I think it's bad for them. They combo us, but we know they don't have Diva Bomb, so we can trance it. Um, Snillo dies, that sucks. Fusion University now gonna clip the bridge, but not gonna get any kills, except Dogman's gonna get the first one up in this fight, gonna get his team up in terms of that so lucky. advantage. The they played it well. Fusion University gonna have to try one more time to get... Things are looking as well. We have seen teams spawn University of... I don't know what, like, I get they want to push our spawn, but like, what? And so Ajax trying to push some damage into the back line so close to that sound barrier will be getting it here in exactly one second. Ajax has what a weird fight. I don't even have words for this fight. We're fighting like in first point and they're just throwing ults at us. Along with an earth shatter, if you're able to layer those appropriately, that could be what you need to push Atlanta Academy back and get back onto this payload. But 21 seconds left. This is it for Fusion University if they want to maintain their presence here on Route 66. Um... I have not VOD reviewed with the team for like three weeks, so unsure. Generally, you don't really need to look through a VOD to objectively talk about stuff. So like we can sit down and we can talk about like how do we want to fundamentally retake Route 66 second point. Everybody can talk about that, but we don't necessarily always, and we can like pull up images and talk about it, but we don't necessarily like all sit down and be like, for one hour, we're going to talk about like Route 66 third point. Like that's not how people work, especially in Overwatch. Like let things organically evolve and hope your team is competent enough and are hungry enough to organically talk about those things and figure them out because forcing it does not help people. You don't want people sitting in VOD review who don't want to be there. That's really negative. Six. Nice with that Graviton Surge. Elk will have his Especially because most of the time you don't need everybody for most things. Barrier. This is, again, it for Fusion University. Have to win this fight where Atlanta Academy is winning the map. As you see that music getting a little bit more intense with five seconds left. Fusion University are taking their time. They're going to be able to touch that payload. Our shatter is oh, the huge shatter. They got a nice counter shatter. Huge bubble to save Snillo. We kill Gator. Oh, Ga Gator pinned Snillo off the map. That's why Snillo didn't die. We didn't bubble him. Transic gets the last hit on Gator because he hit him with his hammer. We then kill Sugar Free. We're up one. I don't know. We started scrimming like three days before the season started. Before our first match. Gonna be doing enough for Fusion University at Chongsik and Burner. When we still had Chongsik and Nice in Korea. To take this fight, but in overtime, Fusion University pick it up. Who in the 11th hour two boop you saw right there is actually a great eat of the Graviton Surge by Hawk. Uh, even though he wasn't picking up any kills with that self destruct, able to waste more of Fusion University's time, but unfortunately. Uh... Yeah, everyone's in LA other than me. I'm home for vacation for like Christmas. Um. It's a good snowball. It was a good fight from us. I don't think Gator should have gone for that pin. It was a really greedy pin. For ATL, they will have to defend once again. However, there's only about, you know, a little more than a minute to Fusion's name, so they really have to make this self destruct Right here, we're really worried about Grav. We don't have a support ult, so we can't really do anything if we get grabbed. We probably just die. So we're trying to play really passive and baiting them to push us so we can bash shatter. And this earth shatter worth its weight in gold as saucy will be ready. How well does my family understand what I do? Very well. I bought my youngest brother for Christmas a Overwatch League Philadelphia Fusion jersey with his battle tag on it. Mind you, he's like five. His his battle tag on it and his number. Um he was very appreciative of it. Did I do well in school? Yeah. I did. No shield. Oh, here we go. The Graviton Surge. They'll keep it So. We're worried about them grabbing because we don't have a support ult. Another huge shatter by Chansik. Like, that is. he's He didn't even wait for Bash. He's just like, fuck you, I'm shattering. And it's huge because, like, we get grabbed, but because they're all on the ground, they have no follow up. 
And we kill the Zarya, because Nice is on like a Pog Champ flank and kills Zarya. So our goal in comms here, we've already won the fight. They are all low. They've used all of their cooldowns. We obviously have won this fight to everyone on our team. Our goal is to make sure Chancic does not die because we don't want to wait. We want to set up. So we're all focused on making sure we play together and don't die and the kills will come as we push. But not dying is the most important part. That was such a close thing, Sugar Free, so close to getting that kill onto Changsik with the shield bash. Hawk trying to. I agree, to doing well in high school is overrated. Atlanta to regroup here. Now they're going to be down self destruct, but they have built up a transcendence in this time. Fusion University, though, have that and even. Really good positioning by Nice. He provides like an off angle to pressure, and it makes it almost impossible for Atlanta to walk up easily without getting damaged. Or nice on the high ground. He knows exactly where to throw this grab. Oh, the earth is going to come out from Atlanta Academy. We go for a combo. We only get Diva Mac, but that's okay. Alarm kills sugar free. Where? Atlanta Academy to start things off. The transcendence from Fusion University. Oh, yeah, we push the brig by the mini. I don't know how he dies so fast, but I guess Alarm only hit headshots. <clears throat> We're up to. We're just kind of playing slow. So we capped with Rally beat up. We did a pretty good job there at the end. Could have been faster. We got stuck in second because that one mistake Alarm made. Not the end of the world. Probably not the, it's not the only mistake we made either. It's just the one that was most prominent to me. Comms for first fight on that last part of Route 66. Um, I am tired. And don't really want to go find it, but I got you. I think they have combo. If they combo, we just reset, okay? Shatter and bomb? We can go pistol? Yeah, yeah, shatter and bomb. Only shatter? Only shatter? You can throw it there. Okay, shatter first, shatter first, shatter first. Okay. Lucio? Okay. He's maybe running. They use trance. <laughs> trance uh, shatter. They, they have, have grab. Combo? Oh, if they combo, they, we maybe just they, Maybe they have, maybe they have. We I think they have combo. If they combo, we just reset, okay? Shatter and bomb. We can go pistol. Yeah, yeah. Shatter and bomb. Only shatter. Only shatter. You can throw it there. Okay, shatter first. Shatter first. Shatter first. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna bash shatter fast. Can you just speed up? I've got. Yeah, three, two, one, speeding. Uh, three, three, two, one, bash. Actually, it was a bash shatter setup. It's a good bash shatter setup. Right now, right now, right now. So I call if they combo, we reset. We call we're going aggressive with only shatter. We talk about possibly comboing bomb with the shatter, but we decide against it. Snillo says when he wants speed, we speed him. We bash shatter. Was a successful bash shatter. We shatter three people. As they go to combo, we shatter D.Va, so they can't even D.Va bomb us. Huge. So we negate their combo and don't need a support ult. So, um, and that's a lot about when you when you say something. It's important that like your team doesn't need to reassure you that they heard you. Does that make sense? Like you can't have everybody go like re re saying a plan there like. Does that make sense? Like, you just have to hear it, and you just do it. And you have to just, like, hope your team is listening to you and understanding you. Going over notable mistakes is going to be a lot better than going through micro details.
Yeah, if Snello calls to speed him, I'm pressing E and I'm going in. I'm not fucking around. I trust that he knows when he wants to speed. It seems, re it seems reasonable. <laughs> He is, he is the brig player. <laughs> How do I feel like FU compares to teams like Stormquake or the current iteration of Runaway? So Fusion Uni, this iteration of Fusion Uni have been around for about six weeks. We've been a team for six weeks. So we have a lot of polishing to do. Everyone on the team is very talented. We can definitely become a very strong team. But six weeks is a small fucking time. The Fusion Uni that played in Season 2, that was like, in my opinion, one of the stronger teams I've ever played with. The strongest team. And our performance against Owl teams, we had played for eight months as a unit. Only change was Bernard for Krakalakin. Bernard fit in really well. So eight months for six weeks is really hard to think about in a comparison. It's a little stressful to rebuild your team and everybody expects the same results because it's not reasonable. So it's just important to remember that like, I don't want to compare Fusion Uni in this iteration to anyone because we are a baby team who needs so much time to play together and grow together and, and trust each other. And it's amazing how far everybody has come in such a short period of time but that does not mean that there is not a long way to go in terms of that. So. Yes, a baby team is 5-0. Because not, not trying to be dicks to anybody, but Fusion Union Season 2 was an an absurd unstoppable team we were murderous like there were no three twos the only three two was a reverse sweep in quarterfinals but we stomped xl2 in the finals we stomped nv in the semifinals we stomped the entirety of group stage like it was just brutal and it's because we had played together so long and we were all very good at the game Though he didn't keep the Sombra so, you know. the rest of the map, it was so good at stopping up <clears throat> ATL here. I mean, it's very dangerous. Every time you go in two steps, that's more room you've given your Sombra. New Runaway is also a baby, baby team, which so is why comparing teams is even harder. Anytime you could be taking bullets to the back of the head, and that's definitely going to be on Dogman's mind, figuratively and literally, <laughs> as we open up here. Sugar Free back on the Brigida. So yeah. Sugar Free going to have to keep really um, close to the back line here, just in case. So... The Sombra comp, obviously you don't have D.Va, but it's still pretty hard for them to just dive you because you can speed back. How would I beat Fusion Uni? Hmm. See you Mike Davis. Thanks for the sub, man. How would I beat us? I don't know. Not saying that because we're so good. I'm saying that because it's not something I think about. Nor should it be something that's that hard considering the number of three twos we have had this season. Mayhem was like one fight from beating us. Literally on Route 66. One fucking fight that we survived in OT. It's like it's not hard. It's just, or it's not impossible. It's just hard. And it's very hard. And I don't know why. I expect every match we go into, I expect to lose. Every single one. I'm never confident. I'm always stressed and worried. I'm always anxious about it. And I definitely play better when I feel that way. I'm like way more cautious about what I'm doing. I try to calm way more. Figure out when where we're getting stuck and how to fix stuff. But... It is, it is insanely nerve-wracking to play on a team that with such a record where you feel like every game is the most important game to win. It's crazy. Yeah, Dogman, like you said, 
popped off here on Route 66. They're a big reason why he was able to they were able to finish the map, but Fusion University holding very, very close. Currently at 0, 0.00 meters. We've seen the payload get held here before. Nice already is EMP, dude. That's so fast. Already at EMP. We actually call not to EMP here because we want it to be last fight. Alarm or Jonak? Almost definitely I'm biased, but I would still say alarm. But take my bias with a grain of salt. The back line and we'll have an ultimate to show for it. <clears throat> Jonak would say Alarm is the second best Zen in the world, and I would say Jonak is probably right, given he has a lot more experience in Owl, but the very first online ATL, they only have 15 seconds left. They didn't take an aggressive push. If they get wiped here. Okay, to be fair, you can be flexible and not play goats and win. We played a majority of not goats in this series, and we are winning. It's not about being flexible. It's about being good at what you're flexing to. It doesn't matter what comp you're playing. If you're not playing well, you will lose. Here, it's, game over. That was a great it's a good EMP. EMP. We have good follow-up. They have no chance of winning this fight. <clears throat> they only have 15 seconds left. They nice calls for us to speed him. We EMP point. They have no ults. We have EMP first. Easy win. I have not seen Violet play, so I don't know. No way. I mean, maybe if you're really, really good and the communication is there, that they knew Nice had that EMP already. Uh, very possible, but regardless, Fusion University <laughs> looking looking good to take this sugar-free. Ah, uh, just going, you know, hey, you've got to play this game as best as you can. He tried his darndest, but ATL will be stopped just around the curve. It's like when you're playing a game and you think you've killed all the enemies, but the yes. music is still going. Oh, favorite meta played with that for you? I really enjoyed Dive. I felt like me and Alarm could solo carry fights and Dive. Um, and not that we needed to, but it was like fun to have that option. <clears throat> Genji Tracer, Somber Tracer dive. Yeah, I've watched Alarm Dumpster on Owl Teams. I'm not going to say names, but dude's nutty. Place right now. Is the distance that they were able to yeah, Alarm's the eligible in Season 3. Have the same time bank, but it looks <coughs> like they're going to be going with a different team comp. Different team comp, a much more is really the green box of victory Beckett. dude this comp is amazing this comp right here is the, the perfect description of how i felt University in this match winning the series in a lot of will be that special so i do actually do this for a reason that's important if the d was gonna eat a 300 damage headshot i'm forcing the briggy or she's gonna go take mega probably forcing the briggy because the diva doesn't have time to go get mega that's important. That's a cooldown they don't have. That's better than not doing it. Objectively. Almost getting that leading kill. We've seen that win a point before on Hanamura at Fuji University. They back up because of it. Another older sniper, which will be insane value. I know they back up because of how close they have to contest. I'm going to position in here because I think it gives me the best yes, OS. So, so that 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 headshot not only gave information, I think it gave a little bit of. How did I like Genji Sombra meta? Um. What was Genji Somber meta? I think we played a lot of Doom Somber in Genji Somber meta. We also played a lot of Ana Zen. Oh no, that meta was weird. That was season two. Like we destroyed everybody in season two, but it was more just because like we were absurdly patient. And we all understood the meta pretty well. I think it was less fun, but I was better in it. But it was like not learning it. It was just like kind of repeating it. And beating people. Atlanta Academy is sugar free getting taken very low. Any casualty from Atlanta Academy just opens up the victory for Fusion University with 33 seconds left. We're in one fight territory right now. Alarm like what like what what? What is what is the plan that, here? Hold that, up. That headshot not only gave information. I think it gave a little bit of intimidation. Okay. So they're speeding to dive someone. Immediately upon coming out of the choke, sugar free almost just dies from spam. So I don't know if we're not if they're not matrixing rockets or what. Um, but also, who are you diving? Like, I'm pocketing the Pharah. The Pharah is not dying. The, the Zarya, Zen, Lucio have gone on no one so far. The monkey is jumping our Orisa. Orisa's just chilling, because she's like, I'm Orisa, I don't give a fuck. And now the monkey's out of position. I don't see the Zen or the Lucio. I think they're chasing the Sombra. Like... 
It's so chaotic. Like, what do they even do? Yeah, headshot by Hanzo. Yeah, still. Like, it's just such a clusterfuck. They can't do anything. This is a 5v4 right now. This is going to be an easy take on this yellow box of victory. Uh, yeah. Alarms Hanzo is nutty. That's what we learned. Bernard's Fair is also crazy. Transic should stop emoting before we win the map. He did it twice. He emoted twice. Yeah. And we took the 4-0. Four hour and 12 minute stream. That is a long fucking stream. Um, if you guys want to see us fucking around and not knowing what we're doing, I think it might be funny. Wait, where is Hanamura? Yeah, what's hiding? Yeah, what's hiding? Yeah, yeah, fighting, fighting. Hold on, 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 Let's go. Let's go. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Only one healer. We can go. Hold them. Monkey, monkey. Yeah, yeah go yeah. dive. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I'm not going with you. Yeah, okay, we, we take, take, please. Top, take, please. Top. Yeah, I'm gonna go somewhere. Just wait. Nah, I'm going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, we spent 35 seconds trying to figure out what we wanted to play, and I just found that fucking hilarious. We're like, we're like, uh, I'm like, what are we swapping to? Chancic says goats. I'm like, no, 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 we can't go goats. We can't go goats. They have May. That's dumb. So we're like, okay, um, well, we don't want to play Farah. I, I think Farah may have been okay, but that's fine. And then we're like, well, can we go dive? It's like, well, m maybe, maybe we can go dive. We can try dive. Yeah, let's go. We did win, though, so, you know. Did Coach just listen to our comms? Yeah, our coach recorded our comms and synced it up with the video for me. We have a single coach. And just to tell you the track record of our coaches, right? Okay. So our first coach was Arrow. He left right at the end of Season 1, or right before playoffs, to go to Dallas. Second coach was Pagion. He left to go be the head coach of the Vancouver Titans, so run away for Season 2 of Overwatch League. Now we have Spazzo, who probably going to go head coach some other Owl team because that's just the trajectory you get on uh, if you coach in uni. So, you know, all of the coaches are ridiculously successful. All very different coaching styles and very different people. But I just wanted to share that because like that clusterfuck because I thought it was super funny because it just shows that like not everything is decided pregame. You don't need some, like, master plan of how to beat shit. You just need to, like, work together and talk. And we figured out some stuff that worked. And then we 4 0 And we're 5-0. and So that's pretty cool. Um, I don't want more than one coach. That seems silly to me. Um, can you add something? Sure. What's up, Chensik? You popped off and emoted on 66 and it was hilarious. Ooh, what is this link? Oh my god, Chensik. <laughs> you just linked your Discord. Okay, fuck it. Go join Chensik's Discord. That's fucking hilarious. Um, yeah, but thanks everybody for hanging out, listening to me babble on, um, about all that shit. 
it's important to realize that while Overwatch is an insanely complex game, a lot of it is intuition, a lot of it is experience, and the most important thing is that when playing in a team setting, you're willing to trust your team, and that that goes a long way. So yeah, um, goodbye, good night.